Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another live stream. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you have the uh, champagne chilled and ready to go tonight. It's about, oh, I don't know, two o'clock central time, give or take. And so I threatened to do a live stream today. I almost didn't actually, I almost just did a video because I've been working on this uh, patchouli list for a long time. And um, I thought it would be kind of a cool idea to do one of these ranked, this is not a top 10 videos on a live so you guys can kind of interact. I have no clue how this is gonna go. Um, so, you know, this uh, could be like a one and done thing and I never do it again. If you guys love it, I'll maybe come back and, and continue to do these on, on lives. But um, I know it's New Year's Eve. Many people are probably out and about hanging out with family and friends. We're not actually doing anything until this evening. So I had some free time and I figured, what the hell? Let's, uh, let's, let's do this. Let's do this live because I thought it would be a, I just thought it would be a cool way to close out the year of 2022. I've enjoyed doing these live streams more and more because of the interaction that you guys kind of give back to me. Uh, and that's part of my favorite part about, you know, doing this, about, about having the channel and talking with you guys. So, um, drop your scent of the day, drop your new year's Eve scent of the day in the chat. Thanks for being here. Sob. Welcome, Andy. Uh, welcome, Nick. Happy new year's in advance, Ajay. Ah, from Paris, Ringo. Beautiful. Welcome. What time is it there? Are you guys about to ring in the new year? What uh, what time is it in Paris? Yes, happy new year to you too, my friend. So my scent of the day, my new year scent of the day, uh, it's actually the first time I've given it a full wear, although I've worn it to bed multiple times. Uh, Anuj found this bottle for me. He actually reached out to me. Usually it's me reaching out to him saying, hey man, do you have this? Do you have that? Uh, and in this case, he actually reached out to me and said, Ramsey, I have a, a tester bottle of this for a very fair price. I think it's an amazing fragrance. You might like to consider it. I've never heard you talk about it. And that does not happen very often anymore. And so whenever the great Anuj makes a recommendation, uh, I stop and listen. And the fragrance is called uh, Giorgio for Men VIP Special Reserve. So. Its older brother from a couple of years before this is on the top 22 uh, to celebrate the end of 2022. Uh, but I wanted to wear this because the name, first of all, and by the way, I do have to say that uh, I just basically turn on my phone and hit play. I don't have a professional mic. I don't even have a professional camera. I just do it on my phone. So if the sound goes a little bit wonky, uh, just give it a minute or two and I'll be back. Make a joke about me being on the moon or something. Uh, but don't be a jerk about it. I don't have a professional mic yet. So there's nothing I can do. But uh, at some point I will. I'm going to have to have someone that's more technologically savvy than I am show me how to set it up. But uh, just if the if the sound quality is not up to up to par, just bear with me, okay? Usually people say they can still hear me. It just sounds like maybe I've gone underwater or something, but I uh, just thought I'd get that out of the way. So this, by the way, uh, the name is a very interesting tell because, again, the name is Giorgio for Men VIP Special Reserve. And whenever I was... Um, getting to know this fragrance, and I still am. Again, this is the first time I've given it a full wear. I've got like a six hour dry down here and I just did a fresh spray before the stream. And you know, what's interesting is whenever you read, um, you know, comments about this, some people say that it's one of the most beast mode fragrances they've ever smelled. And other people say that it is um, almost like a smoothed out, you know, creamier, softer version of its older brother, Giorgio for men um, from a couple years before. This came out in 1987. You can see the Giorgio for men seal right there with the two horses on each side of whatever the hell that is in the middle. Looks like a bureau or something, but I don't know what it is. 
Um, even in color, I don't really know what it is. It looks like two horses uh, on each side of a bureau with a crown on it. I have no clue what that label is. But whenever I hear the word VIP special reserve, the special reserve always reminds me of like, uh, you know, like Crown Royal special reserve or 40 Creek special reserve, like some of these alcohols where they have like the smoother, you know, higher end line. Right. And that's kind of what this is. But the thing that throws people off, I think, is the opening. The opening is um, very strong. Lots of 80s. Uh, notes kind of hit your nose right away. You're going to get the real oak moss. You're going to get the spicy cardamom. It opens up very aldehydic and orangey. So there's like a mandarin orange note that is probably the most prominent note with this cardamom, the spiciness. And this like old school 80s tickle your nose oak moss that we all know and love, right? And so if you just smell this from first spray and make a judgment, you're going to be like, oh my God, this is an absolute monster. But it settles down into that special reserve, um, smooth, you know, like the higher end alcohol line. It settles down into this smoothness that is really evident once you get a couple hours into the fragrance. It does not fall in, apart in the base like I was kind of giving a hard time to some of these niche houses like Bodicea the Victorious. This stuff dries down to this beautiful gorgeous sandalwood and cedar combination um there's cinnamon there's a leather note that kind of comes through in the dry down that mixes with the wood so it's like a leathery oak mossy woody spicy it removes the honey from its older brother and the patchouli is still there but it's not as amped up it, it's not going to make a top 22 patchouli list because it's more rounded more blended if that makes sense um Whereas the older brother really focuses heavily, I think, on the patchouli and the um, honey and stuff like that. And this kind of removes some of the honey, removes some of the patchouli and makes it smoother, rounder. Uh, I love them both. I can't say I really love more one over the other. But um, look at this tester Anuj found me. This is a 120 mil bottle. I think there's absolutely nothing on the bottom except for a 21. Uh, there's no batch code or anything, and but the juice level is like right here. Uh, so he got me. This is like 90 mils of juice at a great deal. I'm looking online. There's some expensive bottles going around, especially if you find a sealed one. So um, as a vintage lover, it's interesting. Like I said the other day, there is just a wall. There's a cornucopia of vintage fragrances for us to find. And even somebody like me or Rich Mitch who does this um on the regular i mean we are constantly looking for vintage fragrances and stuff like that uh and there's always more stuff to learn about and surprise us and get to know and that's some of the one of the greatest things about being a vintage lover is there's just so much out there and when stuff gets hyped and the price kind of goes up um the value for money a lot of times goes down very rarely is it worth spending $1,000 on a bottle of Jean Patou pour Homme? As great as that fragrance is, I'll tell you there's other fragrances you can buy for a tenth of the price or less that will get you in the same ballpark, right? And so there's just so much to learn and discover in the vintage realm. So that's why this is my New Year's scent of the day because it has that masculine, New Year's Eve scent of the day. It has that masculine edge to it, right? And on the other side, it has that smooth refinement, just a smooth operator. Uh, but I love the the harsh. It is kind of a harsh opening, but it settles down quickly. So I think that's why both sides are right. Some of the people that say it's harsh, it's strong, it's the biggest, most beast mode fragrance you'll ever smell. If you judge it in the first half an hour, that may be true. But if you give it a chance to dry down, you'll realize just how smooth and creamy and high class the woods and spices smell. So that's my take on Giorgio for men, VIP Special Reserve, hell of a name. Sad it's discontinued. Um, if anyone knows what the hell those two horses are bracketing, what the hell is in the middle, even in color, I don't know what that is. It looks like a bureau with a Giorgio, like, um, you know, beauty pageant, um, ribbon across its chest with a crown. 
And I have no clue what's up with that Giorgio Beverly Hills logo, but I love the juice. So tell me what you're wearing. Let me catch up on the comments. Um, I know I just rambled on for some time there. Oud Maximus, beautiful. One of my favorite Ouds. Uh, ah, Crime and Punishment. Somebody reached out to me. He wants to remain anonymous, so I will honor his request and said, I'm going to send you a decant of Crime and Punishment by Ensar Oud. And I was like, cool, that's awesome. I mean, anytime I get a chance to smell something like that that I never would before, I feel really blessed. So no complaints there. Beautiful. I wore that the other day. Uh, Must de Sables is, is definitely a beautiful scent. I, I wouldn't get a full bottle. Uh, there's other Les Demo Dables. I think I want more, but I really do like it. It's, it's very well done. Ah, your first time wearing Oud Zen. So what do you make of it? I love it. I think it's one of the best just proper ouds, like uh, out and out, properly executed oud. Nothing weird or strange or, you know, there's no strange selling point or twist. There's nothing fancy or flashy about it. It's just done amazing. Oh, man, I love, I love uh, Serge Luton fragrances in the cold. Feeling Aguil is beautiful. Afternoon, Micah. Nice. Very nice, Ringo. Very, very nice. The uh, last couple hours of 22. Jade Phoenix. Never smelled it. I don't think I have anyways. Let me look it up. Jade Phoenix. Jade Phoenix. I don't even think it's coming up. Jade. Is that a house or a perfume? I'm not getting anything on Jade Phoenix, at least not in Parfumo, man. Happy New Year to you too, brother. Hey, Eric, thanks for being here. Never smelled brew. Rich, I hope you're feeling better, man. I hope you are cured of the COVID. <clears throat> I hear YouTube doesn't like you saying that, so we have to say COVID. <clears throat> hey, Adam. Welcome, welcome. Driving and listening. Welcome, Rachel. Uh, a late Christmas for Ram coming soon. I'm very excited about that. Musk Morisco. Man, you guys are rocking some shit I've never heard of. Um, hope you're doing well, Rich. Everyone giving blesses to the, to the duck, hoping he feels better. Yes, because... Last time I got some people uh, talking shit about my mic quality, and I get it, it's not good. You guys are not here to look at me or listen to the fine audio quality of my voice. I am not singing an opera. If you can make out what I'm saying, that's good enough for me. They're planning a patchouli fragrance. Awesome. That'll be a good one. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, that is correct. I went to Gross and Nice in September for my 50th. There's a shopping mall called Cap 3000. Uh, Bastide de Aromes have a store there. I bought a patchouli extra 100 mil, 26% oil for 49 bucks. Amazing. You know, patchouli is just one of those notes, isn't it? It kind of, um, what did I, I wrote that sometimes I get like sweet and spicy, musky, earthy, green, damp, and and maybe even you could describe patchouli as dank. I think dank patchouli might be my favorite. Um, you know, that green, earthy, dank patchouli. Uh, I just love what it adds to a composition. And here's the thing about this. I've been working on this list for a long time, kind of behind the scenes, and I actually got it up to a top 100. And um, I decided to just do the top 22. We can talk about some of the ones that missed out on the list if you guys would like. But um, I decided to make it a top 22 because the thing about patchouli is it's kind of like vetiver in that it's in everything. There were like 1,200 pages of fragrances in uh, Parfumo that have a patchouli note in it. And so I got to 100 fragrances from my collection like that. There's probably probably half of the fragrances in my collection 
have a patchouli note or a vetiver note or something like that. Those are two of the most used notes. And so I think vetiver might even be more used than patchouli. I think vetiver, uh, vetiviral acetate or whatever they call it is like the number one most important note in a perfumer's like, you know, on their perfumer organ. They keep it right there, front and center handy. So I just wanted to highlight my favorite patchoulis. That's what this list is going to be about. Um, it's going to be the patchoulis that I think are, are worth highlighting. And, um, you know, some of them are extremely patchouli dominant, and that's going to be very noticeable. Some of them, the use of patchouli is just very unique, and I love the way it's used in the composition. But uh, 22 patchouli fragrances should give you guys a good breakdown of my favorites. But we'll talk about, I guess, some of the ones that missed out on the list first, and then we'll hop into the list. So that sounds fun. Vespa bar sounds fun. You got to ride up in a Vespa, though. Yes, Happy New Year, Adam. Patch Hose Unite, that's right. Um, that's right. I mean, who can be a fragrance lover and not be a patch ho? Come on. I'm going with the less fancy Ozarka today because I get a little bit more water in here. So um, the Fiji bottles tend to run out whenever I do a, lo a, lo a long live stream. Yes, what is your scent of the celebration, Rich? Chuli Imperial from Dior and Patchouli from Perfume Aroma Share My Number One, followed by Givenchy Gentleman Vintage. I love warm, powdery, dusty, sweet patchouli. Yeah, man. Actually, I do not have a bottle of Patchouli Imperial. I would love a vintage. Rich Mitch sent me a little tiny sample that I, I plan on doing an early impression video on one day, but um, you know, I, I don't have enough experience with it to put it on the list. And I have never smelled a Perfume Aroma fragrance, period. None of them. I think they have an amber that's pretty hyped. I really want to smell. And they have that patchouli. Um, but I know Zhao from Scented Moments loves Perfume Aroma. I know the Loft, uh, Waft from the Loft Skies love it. I love the house. They went to Rome, I think, just to visit that house um, or the headquarters of, of Perfume Aroma. But I have actually never never snipped a single one. Isn't that sad? Um, yes. Thanks for being here, Alan. It's good to see you, brother. <laughs> That's right. It does kind of look like they are, uh, they're doing something to that flacon, eh? Um, horses can reach from far away. What can I say? Ah, Diagolev, beautiful. Well, Diagolev is actually one of the ones that, uh, did not make the top 22. I mean, it's a proper uh, Shepra. And so there's probably going to be patchouli in the base. And there is patchouli in the base. But I don't think anyone in their right mind could call this a patchouli fragrance. Um, but this just goes to show, I mean, you could almost just close your eyes and pick a fragrance. And there's going to be patchouli in there half of the time, it feels like. So that's why I really had to kind of narrow this list. Um, but I mean, if you want to get technical... There is patchouli in here. Um, uh, what other rojas is there patchouli in that I pulled out? I pulled out, um, oh, let's just see here. There is a couple, I think, Herod's exclusive rojas that have some oud in them. A couple that I plan on doing some uh, full reviews. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it. One is called H, the exclusive Parfum Pour Homme. You guys smelled this one? This is like Roja's take on a fougere, but with oud and ambergris and a uh, very interesting plum note. I know my buddy Jonathan from the Jonathan 1970 channel. You should go check out his channel if you have not yet. He did an entire collection video and he split it up into like seven videos or something. And they're amazing. Uh, hearing him talk about his collection, he says he loves plum. So H, the exclusive Poron Parfum, uh, has patchouli in the base, but it has a beautiful plum in that cystus labdanum, but it almost smells like a fougere. It's very, uh, this is one of those woody, fruity fragrances I would wear in the summer. Um, 
And then they also have one called H, the exclusive Aoud Parfum. So there's like a food note in this one. This is one I still have to review for the channel. I don't think I've, I don't think I've uh, done a video on, on this one yet. Uh, let's see if I can find this one here. H, the exclusive Aoud. So this one actually came out a year before the Pour Homme version. I think they're both discontinued now. Um, this has an oregano note, kind of like Interlude. Uh, by M. Wajhat. I think that has some patchouli in it too. Um, and this has oud, valerian, cipriol, labdanum, and then of course patchouli in the base, which is where you usually find the patchouli in these roja fragrances of this ilk. Um, but that's a good one. I like it. I don't think I would rush out and buy a bottle, but I like it. And then speaking of Shepras, he's got one called Shepra Extraordinaire, and this has um, a uh, patchouli note, I believe, in the base as well. It's just such a common note is the thing. So when you're highlighting these, you know, if you just put everything in the list and went through them, once you got past the top 30 or 40, I mean, you're really getting to this point where you're just talking about fragrances that have patchouli as part of the composition, but they're not patchouli fragrances, if that makes sense. Um, Oh, I'd have to go back and check that, Alan. That's a that's a good question. You should maybe the guy that's that's wearing it today uh, can can answer that. I have not. Uh, I have very irresistible, uh, af not aftershave, but like a shaving balm that uh, Anouj sent to me with a with a order one day. I haven't even tried it because I don't have the fragrance to. I like to wear my you know, fragrance, my um, shaving balms with the perfume. I don't have the perfume. Yes, Happy New Year, Shiva. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, very nice. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. Yes, welcome, my friend. Welcome, brother. Glad to be here. Bellamy, can't go wrong with that, man. My favorite perfume of all time. That's a tough one. It really is. Um, I wouldn't argue with you though, and I think you might be correct. I just I don't have a bottle of it, so I got to stick with Oud Maximus because it's what I have. But uh, I do have a video on Oud Zen. Uh, Russian Adam sent me a little sample, and I really enjoyed it. So that's right, the queen of Channel Ram, Rachel. Happy New Year, brother. Dionysus. Uh, Intent. In uh, Ensense by Givenchy. Nice. Greetings. Greetings from Greece. Excellent. Good to see you. Thanks for being here, man. Yep. That would be cool. Um, I really like that Cartier scent you sent me. I, I made an entire playlist, by the way, because multiple people reached out and they were like, man, those blind sniffing videos that you do, I think are my favorite videos that you do, Ramsey. And I was like, really? Your favorite of all of them? And they were like, yeah. So I made an entire playlist just for the four blind sniffing videos that I have uh, done. Uh, Javoy Psychedelic and Chanel Cormandel. Contract with God, quote of the year. That's right. I have not smelled Reminiscence patchouli. I hear it's a very chocolatey patchouli, though. Um, Horizon by Ariza El Legrand. That's another one that I have uh, not smelled. I'm completely oblivious to Ariza El Legrand. They have a Shepra. I think it's called Shepra Moose that I'm, I'm very excited about. Very excited about. Um, Perfumes, patchouli turns me on. Yeah. So psychedelic is on the list. I'll tell you that right now. Psychedelic is definitely on the list. Patchouli Oud by Affinescence. I have not smelled that one, Alan. Happy New Year, Anuj. We were just talking about you. I'm rocking my uh, uh, G Giorgio for Men VIP Special Reserve you sent me. I had to think about that one for a while. Quite Quite the name and quite the fragrance. You called it. So, um, 
Somebody else asked me about this brand the other day. I've never even heard of Uniques, dude. Uh, never even heard of them until the other day. But um, I looked them up. They don't sound like something that would float my boat, but I'll be glad to try them. Yes, I got your email. I passed it on. Um, so I said, hey, man, you can reach out or email this guy back. I don't know if he will or not, but at least I gave him the option. So I appreciate that. Sheep or moose is on my to sniff list for sure. For sure. Here for the vibes. That's it. New Year's vibes. Well, you guys want to get started or you want to talk about some more that just missed out on the on the, on the uh, top 22? So let's do some that missed out on the top 22 since we have some time. It's only 2.30 here in Texas, so I don't think it's time to start drinking champagne yet. But, um, ooh, they have a Cote d'Espagne fragrance. Really? That is interesting. You caught my attention with that. Um, let me show you an absolutely insane patchouli fragrance that, um, that Mudasir actually sent to me for free. There's nothing on the... Um, there's nothing on the bottle at all. It just looks like this. And the only way I know what it is is because Mudasir told me when he sent it to me. He said, um, he said that this is a fragrance called um, Karma by Lush Cosmetics. And this is a vintage bottle. The, the new ones come in like a black bottle, like a black, I don't know, matte black bottle. and um, this is like, this is the closest patchouli fragrance I've ever smelled to smelling like a head shop, like a, like a real head shop because there's this lemongrass note. It reminds me of um, the smell of like, um, it reminds me of what I imagine the smell of somebody who has like braids in and works at like a place that sells uh that sells water pipes not bongs you know what i mean works at a at a place like that where they sell those um uh you know rolling papers and incense and stuff like that uh and you walk in and it just reeks of like 70s patchouli that's what karma smells like to me it smells like there's lavender and lemongrass and pine but the patchouli is so head shop it's head shop patchouli through and through 70s uh hippie van head shop patchouli and i i can't wear this i mean not as my sense of the day i've worn it to bed before and just kind of laugh at how much it smells like you know a head shop but uh yeah that's a tough one for me i'll show you a couple others that missed out on the top 22 you know, Borneo uh, 1834, um, Borneo 1834 is on my wish list. It, I would love a vintage bottle of that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm always keeping my eyes peeled, but man, they are very hard to come by. I would love it. Coromandel is on the list. La de la Esquise missed out because for me, um, well, it is, it's a rose patchouli, but I was just thinking about how much I love the castorium and the dry down. But it is. It's a rose patchouli, so this it could easily have made the top twenty-two. But uh, I didn't. I didn't have Le Duleix Geese in the top twenty-two patchouli. But if you said it's on yours, I would not argue one bit. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Usually, it's a love for me. What is your greatest of all time? Like of all time, all time, uh, or patchouli? Because I'm going to tell you the patchouli one once we get to the number one spot. But if I actually have a top 100 all-time favorite fragrance video, you can go check out. Uh, if you want a spoiler, my favorite all-time fragrance on that list was uh, Bel Ami by Hermes. But it easily could have been uh, Chanel's Antaeus. Antaeus, I think right now, might dethrone Bel Ami. But if you ask me tomorrow, maybe Bel Ami's back at number one. But those are the two that are right there with Koros kind of playing third fiddle. Yep. Uh, NGL. What's that mean, DJ? I'm not 
I don't know what NGL means. If it were me, I'd be calling her work talentless. Uh, yeah, I tried to be a little bit uh, tactful, but I'm realizing how much uh, I'm realizing how much her work smells the same. You know what I mean? Uh, there's this there's a uh, Gonzalo said it best. Whatever that note she uses for her famous aura, she way overdoses. Uh, and, and that's all I can smell. It seems like I did see that. I reached out to Eugene and, and, uh, let them know. So that was, that was really good to see. I think it's the, I think La Dulea Excuse is the, is the release of 2022. I think it's the best release of 2022 with, uh, Sacred Scarab coming in right behind. So let me show you a couple others that missed out. So. I did a top five Hyrax list this year. You can go check that out. But um, one of the top five Hyrax fragrances was actually Hyrax. Hyracium fragrances, I should say. But Hyrax from the House of uh, Zoologist was uh, on that list. And this is like a Hyracium patchouli fragrance. Some people say it was very challenging. I... Uh, I didn't think it was as challenging as some people made it out to be. Um, Elemi, pink pepper, saffron, Turkish rose, hyracium, hyacinth, which is like a very narcotic flower. This is kind of a narcotic fragrance, actually. Um, like you just want to keep coming back and smelling it, even though it's a little gross to some people. It's that kind of vibe, you know, uh, with patchouli and castorium and civet and tonkin in, in the dry down. But it's very good. Um, I really liked uh, Hyrax. Don't think I would get a full bottle, but uh, glad to have that little 10 ml decant. And I still have Camel, Sacred Scarab, and Tyrannosaurus Rex I want to talk about on the channel. So Hyrax has patchouli. It just missed out. Uh, M7 Oud Absolute actually has a patchouli note. That's very interesting. They added patchouli because the original M7 uh, did not have it. It did not have a patchouli note listed. Let's see. I thought the, uh, there we go. You can see right there it says patchouli. So um, they added patchouli, at least if you believe the notes. There probably was a little bit of patchouli in the very first original M7 release. But uh, this is a very interesting take with uh, myrrh and that oud accord that, you know, Tom Ford originally built when he was first at, uh, at YSL. And I think this is one of the fragrances that really put him and Yves Saint Laurent, the man, on this collision course. You know, Tom Ford was trying to take YSL into the future, and Yves Saint Laurent didn't like the direction that Tom Ford was trying to take him. And this is one of the fragrances why. Now, I think you can still buy this. For the longest time, we thought M7 was discontinued. I think uh, Rich Mitch was saying they just hide it under the counter. So you might still be able to go to a YSL counter and buy this, but this is a very good starter food fragrance. Um, easy to wear, you know, the only thing about this is it's missing that cola vibe opening, that that soda fizzy opening that you get from the original M7 is missing in the M7 Oud Absolute, but uh, they did add patchouli here, and uh, I think a couple other things. I think they added, uh, there were a couple other notes. I can't remember exactly what was added here that was left out, in the original M7, but um, still a very good fragrance for a designer. Uh, a couple of other fragrances I set aside that use patchouli that I plan on talking about in 2023. This is Rose Barbar. And Rose Barbar, this is the only new version of these Guerlain bottles I have, and it's a little 10 ml mini, which is probably more than enough for me. But uh, Francis Kirkjohn actually made Rose Barbar. And that's uh, this aldehydic rose with honey and patchouli. And so um, I have had a chance to smell it. I don't know it well enough to talk about it yet, but um, it, it, I like it. I like what it does. You know, there is a, there's a rose, um, red plum and oud fragrance that Parfumo compares it to. I don't think they're similar, but it's, um, <laughs> It is uh, New York Oud by Bond Number no. 9, a house that I really don't rate, 
but there's a couple that I've come to really appreciate. And New York Oud is one of them. I don't know if this is discontinued or not. Uh, this is one of the few fragrances I wish I had a 100 mil bottle and I have a 50 mil. Very few fragrances fall into that category. Um, but New York Oud has this, this uh, very interesting like red plum note. So it's, it's a rose oud. It came out in 2011 when everyone had a rose oud. But it has patchouli and iris and honey and to mix with that rose oud combo. Really nice for a designer rose oud. I think it's the best from the house in my opinion. Uh, but I don't own a bottle of New Harlem, to be fair. I would love a vintage bottle of New Harlem. I'm not going to pay someone three or 400 bucks for that. Hell no. Uh, especially not when I have Rochas Man, and it pretty much does something similar from what I hear. Same perfumer, um, but you can get that for 30 bucks. Really? Yeah, I've got a sample of that. I'll do an early impression on that. Um, Patchouli disguised as oud. Yes, that's a good point. Um, I think houses do that all the time. Yes, that's right. I love the original album, but I don't think the uh, redo is that bad. I think it's a good starter oud. So, all right, let's let's knock out a couple other patchoulis that missed out. Uh, since we were talking about maybe 50 mil bottles that I wish I had 100 mils of, uh, this is music for a while. And this actually came really close to being in, on the video or on the on the official countdown because I think the, the patchouli in here is absolutely amazing. Uh, this is, in my opinion, a modern fougere with one of the most succulent pineapple notes you will ever smell. Uh, it is sweet, okay? So you got to kind of get past that, um, you know, and I don't like sweetness, but I like this fragrance. I think the lavender pineapple combination is just stunning in the warm weather. And the patchouli and vanilla just gives it legs. This stuff lasts forever. And, and this is one of the few, you know, Bond Number no. 9 New York Oud is one. And this is the other, one of the other fragrances in my collection. I only have a 50 mil of that I wish I would have got 100 mil. But um, not that I need 100 mils, but just would have kind of been cool. Um, what else? What else has a good patchouli note? Uh, sticking with Frederick Mall, Promise has a very interesting patchouli. Uh, it is, it is, so, it is so big. Uh, Promise is gigantic. But um, you know, if uh, if you love Cipriol, by the way, Promise is one of the best takes on Cipriol. And I think recreating that oud accord. Uh, what they have tried to do is they've tried to use that Cipriol patchouli combination to, um, to, to recreate that oud accord. Also, perfumers can use patchouli to recreate oak moss. So since oak moss is kind of banned, um, even though not officially, I think they can still use point up to 0.1% if I'm not mistaken, uh, but I could be wrong. I don't know what Ifra's current rules are, but uh, I do know that one of the sleight of hands that a you know shifty perfumer will try and do to make you think there's oak moss in a fragrance is to use patchouli in a certain in a certain fashion. Um, hard to take a lot of these Western oud scents serious when you have multiple pure pure oud oils. Yes, you're right. That norlimbanol thing that these houses do, um, it, it you know. I still enjoy it. I've, I've kind of, I'm at this point in my journey where I'm, I'm learning to enjoy what I have. Uh, and I'm not, so I'm not so bougie where I only have to have the top of the top, you know, $2,000 pure oud oils. But uh, I know exactly what you mean. It's really hard to, it's almost like it should be called something else. Like it shouldn't be called oud. Uh, it should have its own name. And I think people could have, appreciate it more. Hey, Antonio. Happy New Year's Eve, brother. Jonathan, welcome. I was just hyping up your channel, telling people to go check you out. Um, and I was saying, if you love that plum note, check out uh, H, the exclusive Pour Homme Parfum by Roja. a beautiful plum note there. Anyone who enjoys Animalic and Scratchy, you should check. Yep. Yep. Uh...
Yes, a ton of lavender. And actually, if you've been watching some of the videos that we've done on that uh, lavender, um, you know, if you listen to Eugene and Rich Mitch talk over the last couple of years, they, um, they, I've heard Rich Mitch say on multiple occasions that he finds the lavender in Beau de Jour is the same lavender. Wow, I can't speak to that. I'm not a professional on Beau de Jour. I've only smelled it once in passing, I believe. Uh, but you know, if, if you trust Rich's nose, that's an interesting take. They are both owned by, um, Estee Lauder. So, you know, interesting take, but, uh, yeah, the lavender is beautiful. I'm a big fan. That's right. Evernista Prunaste. Maybe myrrh is what my nose picked up immediately and instinctively. Yeah. My family used to burn myrrh on coal. A ritual smelling oud zen reminded me of that that's cool that's good stuff ajay oud zen's amazing dude it really is i actually have a um i actually have a a reef the dory fragrance that just missed out on the top 22 ouds it's uh war and peace this is this amazing like uh amber and um castorium and real musk i believe there's real deer musk like a co-absolute of real deer must. There's the note breakdown for War and Peace. And probably one of the most hyped uh, Russian Adam, Ariz Ladore creations, along with Ottoman Empire and stuff like that. But this is so worth it, man. This is special juice. This just puts me in this. Oh, God. I mean, there is a um, Indian patchouli and oris root absolute in the heart. So, um, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. This is a great composition for people that want to kind of take the next step. There's no real oud in this, but there is um, real deer musk and real ambergris and a special castorium tincture that Russian Adam uh, distilled himself. So war and peace. And, and the good thing is you can get number one or number two and, and know that you're going to get an amazing fragrance. It's not like you have to get the first one. He actually said, I think, that the iris or oris that he used in the second one was even higher quality is what I heard him say. Um, I don't remember where I, I heard that, but I think that kind of stuck out to me one day is he mentioned that in the in part two of War and Peace, he actually used a higher oris um, absolute. So, yes, this one just missed out on the top 22 patchoulis. And... Histoise de Parfum 1740 just missed out. Have you guys smelled this? This is one of my favorite uh, leather immortel fragrances that no one talks about. 1740 is absolutely amazing. And I love these little 15 mil bottles that Histoise de Parfum does. I wish all niche houses did this. This is such a great way to, you know, get a fragrance in your collection. You can wear it whenever you want. And, but you don't feel like, You've got a splurge on a full 100 mil bottle. And that's probably why a lot of niche houses don't do it. They don't want you to just buy the 15 mil. You know what I mean? But uh, 1740 used to be called, um, I think, Marquis de Sade, if I remember correctly. But it's spicy, leathery. There's this Tavana, patchouli, cardamom, coriander. But it's that birchy, smoky, leathery, uh, immortel dry down that's just stunning. Man, I love 1740. One of the best from the house that no one talks about. So, or very few people talk about, I should say. They, it does get talked, but I think it deserves even more. I'm shocked this hasn't been like hyped more in the fragrance community. Um, what else? Oh, speaking of Estee Lauder, how about some tobacco oud? This one missed out on being in the top 22. Um, Tobacco oud has a, uh, obviously, tobacco and oud note, but it also does have some patchouli, but it's not very prominent. That's why it didn't make the top 22. Uh, there's also a sandalwood note, and some say this liqueur, almost like um, whiskey glass with ice, you know, feel, is, is, is the liquor vibe that you'll get from this. But uh, I love this fragrance. And Rich Mitch said that the base of this Reminds him of Amber Absolute. I would love a vintage bottle of Amber Absolute one day. There's no way in hell that I'm paying two grand for a 250 mil 
flacon of a reformulated amber absolute. Forget that. Um, Mr. Herod by Penn Halligans. Really? I'm not a fan of Penn Halligans, Alan, but if you say that's your favorite, I will put it on the sniff list for sure. That's true. It's just really expensive, and some people say it doesn't smell the same, right, DJ? Hey, the goat, Robes08. The goat joins the Ram channel. Welcome, Robes. Welcome, Mark. Glad to see you, brother. You know a lot about aroma chemicals. Have you purchased them to smell? Uh, no, I have not purchased the aroma chemicals. The aroma chemicals, like you mean the, um, like the Givodon and, and IFF ingredients? No, but I did get, so Russian Adam sent me, he sent me these, which are like these little, um, like this is Kinam Oud, and they each have one particular thing in them. Um, of course, it's not going to focus of my face my face is in the way um but anyway so some of them were like pure rose oil this is bengal sandalwood uh and so i've got to smell a lot of the ingredients themselves which is kind of cool it changes the way that you view fragrance once you once you get to smell the actual notes inside of the fragrance it changes the way that you smell them for sure but as far as like have i smelled um, pepper wood, which is like a Givaudan material or something. No, I have not. I have not smelled the, the those kind of uh, aroma chemicals, but I have smelled a lot of the, you know, tobacco absolute, rose absolute, sandalwood, different types of sandalwood, different types of oud. There's oak moss, there's labdanum, there's benzoin. You know, he sent me like a starter kit of 50 of these. So that was really cool. We actually did a video on it together. If you go watch my um, if you go to lives, uh, or interviews, there's a playlist specifically dedicated to interviews. Uh, you will see, uh, the Russian Adam part two interview is where we go one by one and smell each of these. So I ask them like, Hey, what do you think, uh, Russian rose smells like? And then we go, what do you think Azerbaijan rose smells like? And he gives his opinion. And we go to the next one. What do you think Iranian rose smells like? And so that was just amazing. He's so open. That was like a four-hour stream. He's so open and honest and, um, you know, willing to share his knowledge with the community. He's a, he's a big asset for the community. Uh, Paloma Picasso, I have, but I, but I think my bottle is from 2007. I think it's a L'Oreal bottle, and I, I, I would love to try try a true vintage. I don't think I've really experienced it because I hear people rave about it. it. It didn't do it for me. Um, yes, Happy New Year, kid. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. Royal Cedar. Yeah. I mean, I still love it. I still love the fragrance. Royal Oud's probably one of my favorite Oud's. Um, but, I mean, that's why it made my Western Oud video. I did a Western Oud video and a real Oud video. Uh, and so the Western Oud, I'm not saying they don't have Oud because these houses could put a drop of Oud in there, uh, but they smell like the Oud, uh, note is mostly derived from some sort of synthetic, you know, Norlimbanol or whatever they're using. Um, grew up on Bahor, ah, Bahor, that's right, I love it. Got in Fortitude and Valor, and wow, both are good. Thanks for the rec. Yeah, uh, there's actually, there are three of them. So um, Fortitude is my favorite because it is, actually, hang on, I think someone's at the door. I might need to grab this. Uno momento. Uno momento. Don't go anywhere.
All right, how about that? Did you guys run? Look what I got. A gift? How about a random unboxing? Um, sorry, I had to run down the stairs. <sighs> I need to hydrate. I think I might know what this is. Man, the stamps on here are insane. How many stamps did they have to use? Jesus Christ. Um, man, I can't think of anything else than, than what this would be. I'm thinking that this is Lanchetti Uomo. That's my guess. I'm going to have to cut into this and see. Look at these stamps. Look at these stamps they had to use. <laughs> oh, hilarious. I mean, they're everywhere. They, like, put them all over. All right, let's, let's open this. Let's open this bad boy. A random unboxing on a... Ah, they packed the shit out of this. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. What in the world is this? What are you? What are you? How cool is that, though? Somebody literally at the door with perfume. While we're doing a perfume live stream, they pack the hell out of it. My handy dandy unboxing knife is getting some serious. Ah, I lied. It is not Lanchetti Uomo. This is actually maybe even more rare because I think. This is the only one in the world that uh, is is the entire set. You guys could probably find um, you guys could probably find one offs. Like I'll show you what I did. But um, the guy who sent it was pretty cool. He worked with me. I sent him an email, and I was like, "Hey man, you know you've got these here. I'm looking for like fifty bucks off. I'll do it." And he was like, "Okay, that's fine. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas, dude." So this is the full. Pierre Cardin Centaur line. Are you guys familiar with these? Let me show you the two I bought before I bought the whole set. So I bought this one for $12, uh, the blue, Pierre, Pierre Cardin Centaur uh, blue, which is like this powdery leather. And I really like it. I, I've worn it to bed. I really enjoy it. And, um, and I bought what I thought was the original before they put the horse heads on and ended up being the noir, the black Pierre Cardin noir, uh, which is not in this, in this set, luckily enough. So there's only one that I'm going to be missing now. And it is, and this is almost like a greener, it says noir, it's, uh, but it's actually like this green take, uh, on a woody, leathery fragrance. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoy. I've worn both of them to bed now, and I've really enjoyed both. So let me show you the whole set. Look at that. So the red, the green, the I got a double up here of the blue, the middle one, which I think is the original, um, the this one looks black, but the top is different. And the red. How about that? How cool is that? Um, I love stuff like this. 
This is the only one I found where the whole set is intact. None of them have been sprayed, he said. And so I'm just going to look them up real quick because I want to tell you about them. And then I'm going to put it away and we'll get on with the list. One day I will. I'll do it. This is not a top 10 mer for sure. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Follow the wave more. Yeah, that's right. They do. They follow the wave. Uh, Pardon is on the list, Antonio. It is on the list. I just want to look up some of the uh, notes on the on the Pierre Cardin Centaur. So there's only one I'm missing now, and it's the one with the orange top, the queer ombre. So this one, the red one, is called queer etalon, and I think this is the one that uh, Armando sent me a sample of. So I have a little sample of. It's basically spices and leather, and he compared this to queer moresque by Serge Luton's, and he said, interestingly enough, that these both came out in the same year. They both came out in 1996. So who copied who? I don't know. But uh, I don't have a bottle of Queer Moresque. It is very high on my Serge Luton vintage wish list. Queer Moresque um, and Fumari Turk are probably the two that are right at the top. And then Iris Silver Mist and La Mer are right underneath it. And then probably the bottom tier of uh, Serge Luton's that I want are stuff like Cedra, um, you know, Sheepa Rouge, which uh, I hear, I know you hate robes if you're listening, but I would love to smell it. So uh, Pierre Cardin. See, this one has a gold cap, though. And my black one has a black cap. I don't, are they the same? Are they the same? Are they different? I mean, why? Why is one gold and one, and one black? I don't understand. But, um, that I have to, I've got to do some research. This is going to take some serious research breaking down. The, um, the, uh, original, I guess this is the original. I don't know. This is like the white one, maybe a random unboxing in the, in the middle of a live stream. How about that? Uh, uh, okay. I found, I found the gold one. Actually it is. It's different from the one that I had, the black one. This one's called Centaur. Tet de Or, and it's green, spicy leather, is what it says. Interesting. Okay. So that will, I'll try to do videos on all these at some point. And then this one right here with the see through with the uh, white horse head on the top is um, uh, Centaur Queer Blanc, and it's a Floral, fruity, leathery. Wow, look look at the note listing on this one. Oak moss, fig, leather, mint, tobacco, vetiver, and citrus. Sounds badass. All of these sound amazing. And I was just blown away by the quality. And I got this one on um, Mercari for $12. See, that's what I'm talking about when it comes to vintage fragrances. There are so many out there that are uh not hyped that you can just kind of find on your own and explore and a lot of times the value for money is through the roof that's the uh so now i've got two they've got they've got a brother a brother blue horse in arms um so what's interesting though is the bottoms are different though the one that i bought on mercari says aladdin fragrances the one I bought, interesting. The one that I bought um, from this guy doesn't say anything on the bottom. It just has like a white little number. So that's very interesting. And finally, and then we'll move on to the list, is the, uh, the green, the green one, which is, what is the green? The green is... Um, Centauri Quia Fougere, oak moss, green notes, woods, patchouli, tonka, and citrus. Green citrusy fragrance. Very interesting. I love stuff like this. Um, 
So this is awesome. The only one I found in the world. So, so that's good stuff. Pierre Cardin, the whole entire queer collect, the entire centaur, centaur collection, which I think they're all takes on leathers. My kind of stuff, discontinued. Um, I got a great price. It was the only one I found online, so I'm stoked to have this. So anyways, thanks for putting up with a random unboxing in the middle of what was supposed to be talk on Chewy. All right, I'm going to put these back. All right, so let's get started on number 22, shall we? Let me catch up on the comments. Happy New Year, Arnold. Thanks for being here, man. Happy New Year. Uh, I wore part on two days ago to showcase the suave side of patchouli. It does. It really does. Uh, there's something a little funky there. Do you get an oud note from it? Um, Tom Ford patchouli, absolute, is very much slept on. Never smelled it. Is it discontinued, Antonio? <laughs> Hold my Antaeus. That's right. Dropping off a haul from Anuj. No, not an Anuj haul this time. More than un more than usual amount of horses today. That's right. Ram duck horse. That's right. I know you will have some that hate. It, but I dig Ursa by Tiron. Did I, I? Did I review Ursa? I don't. I can't remember. Um, I think I did. I think I have a video on Ursa. Someone sent me a decant. Um, I think I prefer my Straight to Heaven Extreme. I've got a full bottle of it, so I wouldn't buy Ursa, but it wasn't bad. Quit horsing around. That's right. Uh, there is the queer block. That's right. I'm, I'm now. I only am missing the queer ombre, but it is like gone. It's gone from from the internet. So I don't know where it is. Uh, Lamur is quite Lamur from, from Serge Luton's is hands down probably the most complex he has ever made. Quite impressive, like smelling complexity of an actual old church wall with centuries of myrrh impression that sounds amazing so that is very high on my uh wish list maybe i'll put it in the top tier with uh uh queer moresque and fumari turk i want the vintages though that's the problem is i'm kind of waiting for the vintages but um it's kind of one of those things all right let's get started on the list we've been warming up for an hour we're warmed up we're ready to go we're coming off the bench hot so number 22, so top 22 patchoulis of 2022. Uh, number 22 is going to be Jean-Paul Gaultier's Coco Rico. Now this is discontinued, all right? But uh, the bottle, it looks like a, the head of a man, right? If you turn it this way, it actually has the side profile of the Jean-Paul Gaultier uh, torso bodies. How cool is that, eh? Uh, um, so, so, nice bottle. I like the fact that back in the day, this isn't that far back in the day, houses used to actually, um, they used to actually care about the bottle instead of just putting it in a standard bottle over and over and over again. I'm looking at you, Tom Ford, you know, just pumping out the same bottle over and over and over again. But um, Coco Rico was done by two master perfumers. And it was done by Olivier Cresp, who I have great respect for, and I need to try his Acro brand. And I've never smelled any of the Acros. And Anique Minardo, who is one of my favorite perfumers from, you know, she was very popular in the 90s and the 2000s. Uh, and she made just some of my absolute, I love her style. You know, uh, one, she made one of the best value for money fragrances of all time in uh, Boucheron's Jaipur Om. But um, <laughs> that's good stuff, Alan. Uh, I don't know if I should read that or just let everyone else read it, but uh, I, I appreciate you bringing 
the humor to the stream while Mike B can't be here. So Mike B is out. Alan, you're in. You're in. You're off the bench, buddy. Um, so Coco Rico, I, I will say it, it reminds, it will remind you of Lidge. Okay. Lon Stante Guerlain, uh, the Eau de Parfum, the Extreme. It, it used to be called uh, Lon Stante Guerlain, Eau de Parfum, uh, Extreme, or what was it? Lon Stante Guerlain, Eau Extreme is what it used to be called. Then they changed it to the Eau de Parfum. So it might be a little bit redundant if you are not a collector, if you're just someone that wants to be uh, very pragmatic about buying fragrances and what they wear. If you own a bottle of Lidge, you probably don't need this. Yes, there is a little bit more freshness in the top because they use this uh, fig this fig leaf note in the top. Where did my, um, ah, my microfiber cloth? I'll save you guys from staring at the, uh, I'll save you guys from staring at all my fingerprints. But, um, so, you know what? This smells like the uh, broken decant that I had yesterday of, because uh, this is what I cleaned it up with. I remember why I wasn't using it now, that Francesca Bianchi that I had to do yesterday, uh, the dark side, because I broke the sample. I didn't plan on doing it, but I had to do it. I cleaned it up with that. Um, and so Coco Rico is like this woody gourmand patchouli. There's cacao. So it kind of showcases the chocolatey side of patchouli. Um, but if you're buying this thinking you're getting something just absolutely unique, it is a take on Lidge. It came out years after Lidge came out. Lidge came out 2004 for the EDT. I think 2005 for the uh, O-Extreme. And this came out in 2011 by Jean-Paul Gaultier, and they discontinued it. So obviously they were, you know, in 2011, L'Enstant de Guerlain was very hyped in the fragrance community. So they were trying to hop on the bandwagon. But as a collector, this is really cool to have. And if you're a patchouli lover, the quality is very good. But don't listen to the people that say, oh, this is just, you know, you have to have this. This is the greatest patchouli of all time. It, it's good. But I, you'll see L'Enstant de Guerlain is much, much higher on the list. So Coco Rico comes in at number 22. Number 21 is a fragrance that I actually had out of the top 22 at some point, and it ended up finding its way back in because I wore it more. Uh, at first, I thought it smelled very plasticky, and I, and I still do think it smells plasticky. I think there's a plasticky... Um, when you first spray, the first minute or two is extremely plasticky for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I found that actually with their other fragrance too. I own uh, one called Queer from this house, and it was the exact same thing. Uh, very synthetic, plastic vibe. But if you let that calm down, you'll notice there's a beautiful fragrance underneath. And these little purple bottles from the House of Molinard are getting harder to find. I think they're still available, but they're good fragrances for not a lot of money. Uh, and this one's actually called Julie. Go figure. Uh, so Molinard's Julie. And this came out in 2015. This is an eau de parfum. Uh, this is a earthy, woody patchouli. So when you first spray, you get geranium, orange, and neroli. It's a little fresh. Maybe it's that strange contrast of neroli, uh, the freshness of neroli with the dank heaviness of the patchouli here. It's a very spicy patchouli. I think the geranium adds to the spices, to the spicy feel. Sometimes geranium can come across smelling rose-like. Sometimes it can come across smelling very spicy. Here, it's spices. And um, the dry down is musky sandalwood with vanilla. But uh, it actually is a really good patchouli scent. It took me a while, though. If you get this right away and you hate it, give yourself some time because I did come around on this ultimately. Polymer po Poron. That's a good name, actually. Um, it really does showca showcase the earthy aspects of patchouli the spicy earthy aspects so uh molinard's patchouli i hear they also have one called vanilla patchouli or patchouli vanilla i don't know uh which one but uh very underrated as alan says see i like having you guys here because you can add to the conversation i'm enjoying this so far this has been a good good stream uh number 21 is molinard's patchouli number 20 
is according to uh, Parfumo, it's discontinued, which is an absolute shame. Uh, I've actually never smelled patchouli magnetique. I know Rich Mitch really rates it, but uh, I have never smelled it. So, you know, it's, um, it is uh, on the to sniff list. And so this number 20 is discontinued, if you believe Parfumo. And it's actually a cheapie, or it was a cheapie. I don't know if now that it's discontinued, prices are going higher or what. But it was marketed by a company called, um, uh, I think, I, I'm not 100% sure what happened with the house, but I think it used to be Animal Group Parf Perfumes. And then I think right before uh, they ended up selling it to a company called Parlux, and I think Parlux discontinued the fragrances actually, is what ended up happening. Because if you go watch my original patchouli video, I was saying that I'm stunned that this house has kind of uh, remained unbought. They just put out their, you know, million bottles a year. I don't know how many bottles they create for the world. And that's it, you know. And um, they just pump out their 500,000 a million bottles a year. And they were happy with that. And they were one of the houses that stayed away from being bought by one of the bigger distributors or you know, uh, that kind of thing. But it looks like it did end up happening in the end. I will say this, though. My bottle uh, is Animal Group Perfumes. And on, on Parfumo, it says it was last marketed by Parlux Limited. So I don't know if there's a difference. Uh, but this is Animal Animal. Now, be careful. This is Animal Animal for Men. Be careful because there's an Animal for Men. Uh, and that's a completely different fragrance. It's like a spicy, floral, summer fragrance. So if you buy that thinking you're getting this, boy, you're in for a shot. Uh, but Animal Animal for Men uh, came out in 1994. And it's a gourmand take on patchouli. Um, and what's interesting about this is this came out a year after Thierry Mugler's Angel. Not uh, Amen. Amen is also on the list, but it's much higher. I, I think Amen is the fragrance that, you know, took this DNA and ran with it and it just took off. Uh, Amen kind of changed the game in the 90s, this masculine gourmand. But what's interesting is before Amen came out in 1996, there was Animal Animal for Men. And I think the two smell very similar. Um, I've, I've heard some people like Joy Amin say that they think that this smells like a mixture of Amen and Amen uh, Pure Havan or Pure Malt, or there's all these different facets from the Amen flankers in there. Well, this came out years and years before Amen ever did any flankers. Cheap ass bottle, okay, with probably the cheapest little plastic thing down here that you can actually take off. Um, but it doesn't look bad. The color of the juice is nice. And the, the atomizer is so 80s or 90s, if you will. Uh, but the juice, if you just close your eyes, forget about the shitty packaging, forget about the fact that it's a $20 fragrance, and really enjoy that honey, uh, lavender, patchouli, uh, gourmand patchouli. There's tobacco, there's vanilla, there's florals, there's woods, there's everything here. Uh, this punch is way above its weight class. I love the patchouli in here. Animal, animal for men is number 20. All right, you guys guess what the next one is? Number uh, 19. It's been mentioned in the chat. It has been mentioned. It's a niche. It's a niche patchouli. And it's from the house of Nasomato, which by the way, I should mention, many people think Nasomato is is French or, you know, um, they're not. They're actually Italian. They are an Italian house. Nasomato. Think of it like that. You know, think of it with a A, hey, O, oh, hey, oh. Um, And this is Pardon. And this is another take on that uh L'Enstant de Guerlain DNA, okay? You notice Coco Rico is like a designer take on it. This is like a niche take on it still. L'Enstant de Guerlain is much, much higher on my favorite patchouli uh, list. Um, and um, 
Eric says that uh, the patchouli, Molinar patchouli intense ver version haunts him to this day. A great gourmand patchouli, unapologetically herbal yet sweet. I've never smelled the intense version, though. That's the thing. Um, but uh, at number 19, Pardon is interesting because the house actually does not release the notes. So the house of Nasomato and the house of... Um, What's his what's his other house that that this guy owns? Um, they have made stuff like hang on, I'll tell you in just a second. Orto Parisi. Orto Parisi. Um, none of the fragrances he releases for either house. And I just recently found out that Nasomato, Nasomato is supposed to be um, the easier to wear fragrance house and orto parisi is supposed to be the more challenging so i'm really getting into the orto parisi's now i bought um uh i bought a bottle that came out a year ago called quoium q u o i u m from that house stunning leathery smoky love it uh and i was sent by a perfume god person who wants to remain anonymous a sample of sturkis and i really like sturkis Sturkis is, um, to me, like an improved version of t uh, Testa di Moro by um, uh, Salvatore Ferragamo. I really, and they both came out, I think, in the same year or around the same year. So there was some molecule that they were using that probably was shared. But um, Sturkis is much more animalic. I like the oud in it and stuff like that. Uh, but there's no note breakdown for Pardon. So it's all a guess. Whenever you hear people talk about uh, notes on either the house of Naso Mato or the house of Ordito Parisi, just keep in mind, it's a guess. But usually what you'll see for the house of, for, for Naso Mato's Pardon is Magnolia in the top, uh, unsweetened chocolate or patchouli, because what gives off that patchouli, what gives off that chocolate note? There's another chocolate fragrance that has a chocolate note coming up on the list very soon, you probably know which one it is, um, is patchouli. Patchouli can sometimes give off that. Uh, if, you, if you ever heard the perfume guy do his chocolatey patchouli video, he says chocolatey patchouli like 10,000 times. Chocolatey patchouli, chocolatey patchouli. And it is, it's chocolatey patchouli. Uh, but they make it a point to say they think it's unsweet chocolatey patchouli. Uh, and there is something in the background, almost like there's an oud accord I don't know if there is oud in here, but it is like there's some sort of animalic punk underneath it all with some sweet tonka bean and cinnamon and sandalwood. And it all blends together to make it a beautiful uh, extra long lasting patchouli. Uh, I like this DNA. So I like the fragrance uh, and I like black Afghano from the house. But I think if I'm going to explore more. I want to explore from the Orto Parisi line, the more challenging line. They have one called Taroni. I'm really interested in sniffing Taroni. But uh, Pardon is an amazing take on a chocolatey patchouli that will remind you a little bit of, of L'Instante Guerlain. You can't get away from it. But like a niche version of it, I still much prefer L'Instante Guerlain, as you'll see as we go through the list. But um, but yes, Pardon is, is good. And it comes in at number 19. Number 18 is a fragrance that I think is very underrated in the fragrance community. Uh, um, they're Dutch. I thought they were Italian. The guy's name is uh, Alessandro Guattieri. You can't get much more Italian than that. Are you sure about that, Eric? Are you positive? Um, Buono sera. Not so mato. Good evening. It's all right. Nice. Leighton got some patchouli, but it always smelled to me like Vicks Vapor Rub with a little sweetness. <laughs> you blind bought Leighton. I actually have a bottle. Um, believe it or not, I do. I have a bottle of Leighton. And I have a bottle of Herod. And actually, they both have patchouli in them. Uh, but this is more, you know, that tobacco with cinnamon and osmanthus. And this is more that... Um, what is it? Gayak wood with uh, that apple you know, very uh, mass appealing apple top. And I think they both have patchouli. 
believe it or not, Layton, if you if you want to go to like a college bar and blend in or something, just wear Layton. You'll you'll smell like the high end version of all the shit the twenty year olds are wearing. Um, I believe Nasomato means crazy nose in Italian. Interesting. You have all nine of them. Really? That would be awesome, man. Cave Layton to my son. Hey, welcome. Happy New Year's Eve, my friend. You have enough juice to sink the Titanic. Is that 31 root cam bone? Yes, man. I think it is. I can't tell. Uh, but if it is, good for you, Abe, because um, I am I am really I'm really loving 31 root cambone. Uh, OK, so let's let's talk about number 18 on the list. It's a diptyque. It's another it's another niche. But I'm a big fan of this fragrance. I think it's uh, very underrated. It's like an earthy, spicy, very unique take on patchouli. And it's called Tempo. All right, so here's the thing about Tempo is, and you can see in the background, you may not really be able to see because the lighting's not very good. Uh, let me open the blinds. Let's get some light in here. All right, so you may not really be able to tell, but if you ever get a close-up of the bottle, you can see there's like, psychedelic mushrooms and like elephants blowing smoke and all this like weird 70s like imagery and i think they're trying to hint at the patchouli of the 1970s which i absolutely love as you'll see as we go down this list um but what's interesting what they did is they paired it with a very smart note of violet leaf and of course violet leaf is in fahrenheit which also has patchouli but no one talks about it uh, no one talks about the patchouli in there because it's really about that gasoline opening with the leather. And Fahrenheit is a big floral heart, believe it or not. But it smells so masculine. So here they paired it with violet leaf and clary sage, which makes it smelling extremely masculine. Um, you know, if, if you've smelled some of the patchoulis from the 70s and 80s, you'll know they come across smelling so masculine. So does this to me. Tempo smells like, you know, it smells like a man who wants to be wearing uh, a fragrance from the 70s that uses patchouli, but doesn't want to offend. So he picks up a niche and, you know, it's a little bit more pleasing to the people's noses around him, but it still gives him the um, it still gives him the satisfaction of wearing that 70s patchouli. So that's my take on it are interesting, earthy, spicy. There's also a, um, so they use Indonesian patchouli in here, which by the way, in the 90%, something like that, or over 90% of the world's patchouli comes from Indonesia, in case you didn't know. I didn't know that for the longest time. And they added this mate tea absolute note. It's a very unique fragrance. Some reason it just went right over the fragrance community really didn't give a shit about it. But if you're a patchouli lover, I can highly recommend Tempo. <laughs> All right, let's check some comments. Ramon Mon Monegal, Mon Patchouli is another one worth trying. Jasmine Patch Combo, beautifully harmonized. I've never tried anything from the house. Uh, they have one called Oud Soul or Soul of Oud or something I would like to try, but I've never, never smelled it. Ah, how about that? How about that, Vlad? I just said it before I read your comment. Thank you. Thanks for the wreck. Let's definitely get some light in here. Yeah, man, I need some. Uh, I need some better lighting. Some serious juice. Nice, Julio. Appreciate that. Uh, I'll give him a shot, if, Alan. If you're if you're a fan, and there are multiple people saying they're good, I'll give him a shot. Interesting. I, I could have sworn uh, I did some research on the house of Nasomato and I thought they were Italian. But uh, if two people are saying that they're from uh, they're Dutch, I'll, I'll, I'll roll with it. Solavud and Alhambra Oud are brilliant. Nice. 
Nice. All right. So they're a Dutch house. Very interesting. A Dutch house with an Italian perfumer. Is that what it is? Um, all right. Next, we've got an absolute banger. Uh, number 17 is brilliant. Uh, one of my favorite fragrances of all time. One of my forever fragrances. You know, I've got three bottles of this. I never want to be with, without it. It's um, Davidoff's Zeno. And I do have the vintage uh, Lancaster. It's hard to see, but Lancaster is what you want if you're looking for the vintage. Uh, this is a 75 mil. I have two of these. And I also have like a 30, 25, 30 mil. I don't know, 50 mil. Um, but I have enough juice to hold me over. Zeno is absolutely brilliant. And I am still of the impression, even to this day, that this is what kind of inspired one of my favorite gear lawns of all time, which is called Heritage. Uh, because in 1986, uh, master perfumer Michel Almarac created this. And there's a very interesting article uh, on Fragrantica. If you go look up Zeno and look for the articles, you can read that um, Michel Almarac gives credit to Guerlain's Chalamar when they created this. They said that they wanted the vanilla in the dry down to uh, have this Chalamar reminiscence, okay? Uh, I, you know, I don't know is the correct answer. I, I, at one point I was telling people, just pay the extra 20 or 30 bucks and get the vintage. Um, I don't know if the Lancaster bottles are still 20 or 30 bucks over what the modern stuff is selling. Um, but, uh, some people say that it's still good, that maybe just the oak moss is a little more turned down in the new ones, that the new formulations are still good. I, I don't know. If I were you, I'd pay the extra 20 or 30 bucks or even 40, double, double the price or whatever it is and get the Lancaster version. But I do hear it's still good. Uh, but I don't know. I've never done an actual proper comparison. Uh, but, uh, I used to think this is discontinued. It's now being marketed by Coty. Anytime Coty markets something, it scares me. Uh, Rich, here we go. Here we go. Modern Zeno lasts two hours on me. There you go. From, from, from the duck's mouth to your ears. Uh, I would go with the vintage Lancaster. That's just me. I like having the vintage version. That's, that's who I am. That's what I like. Uh, that's what makes me the happiest, so that's what I'll buy, but uh, obviously to each their own. But uh, what's interesting about this is there's this beautiful lavender in here that some people say reminds them of Beau de Jour, and I, I know what they mean. Again, I'm not a Beau de Jour expert, but uh, there is this very interesting barbershop, amber. So this, if I had to classify this, I would probably call it like a barbershop amber fougere, okay? because um, of the lavender and geranium and tonka. It has the proper fougere, you know, structure, but, but it also has brilliant woods. It's got this unbelievable rose note. The rose note in here is haunting and the patchouli and the dry down, the patchouli vanilla combination. And I think that's what gives me the heritage impression is because it has the patchouli, and, and Heritage has a rock star patchouli for me. It's higher up on the list uh, because I love it so much. But when you mix that with the Guerlainade, it gives a very similar impression to me. The vintage EDT. Uh, and the fact that Michel Almarac actually modeled the base off of Shalimar makes it even more interesting. So go read that Fragrantica article where he talks about Shalimar being a... Um, being a um, inspiration for them when, when building Zeno in 86. And then it really felt like the Amber Fougeres took off after Zeno. So huge fan, huge fan of Zeno. Uh, one of my favorites, it could easily be like a forever fragrance for me. So number 17 and the patchouli in it is mind blowing. All right, number 16 is a, a fragrance I don't have a full bottle of. It's the only one on the list I don't have a full bottle of. 
Uh, but I do have this little bad boy, this little, whatever this was, 10 or 15 mils, I can't remember, but I'm blessed to have it. It's Tom Ford's Moss Brex. Very hard to find. Uh, I've seen bottles of this going for $1,500, $2,000. Do not pay that. If Rich Mitch was here, he'd call you a pervert for paying that. Don't pay it. Just don't do it. Don't give the scalpers what they want. Um, thank you, Antonio. That means a lot. Seriously. Uh, your comments always, you know, they always lift me up. So thank you for being here. Thank you to everyone for being here in 2022 with me. It's been a hell of a year. Hell of a year. Enjoyed it immensely. Um, I, you know, when I first started the channel, I uh, almost didn't want to because I thought like, you know what? This is something that I do for me. It's mine. It's something that I do. I have my ritual of my fragrances and it's for me. Uh, and I don't really care to share it with the world. But then once I got the channel going, I really found that um, actually it was the opposite. The more I shared, the more I enjoyed, the more feedback I got from you guys, the more I then learned from from you. It's like, you know, it's like the ask the audience uh, lifeline on who wants to be a millionaire. All of the knowledge is out there. I'm just one person. But um, so I've, I've, I've enjoyed it immensely, way more than what I ever what I ever thought I would. So thank you to everyone who's been here with me in uh, in 2020. Too. Uh, I hope you all have an amazing new year and uh, can't wait to see what 2023 brings to the channel. So thank you, my friend. Thank you for the super chat. I can't do the smelly voice. Thank you for the super chat. But uh, thank you, Antonio. It's very kind of you. The smell is still intact. Yeah, it doesn't last. OK, good stuff. Thanks, Rich. I didn't I, I can't say I've done a proper comparison, but. I wouldn't buy the new one anyway. It's not my style. So Moss Brex, this is one of the original Tom Ford private blend releases in 2007. And it's classified as a woody spicy. It has tarragon in the top, which I've mentioned before is actually one of my favorite notes. Um, as far as an opening note goes, because it has this like bitter vintage masculine which i love um i mean hell my scent of the day is a great example of vintage masculine love for me and um so it has this like bitter anisic like smell tarragon does uh and there's tarragon there's clary sage rosemary extremely masculine opening with moss brex but it dries down to this spicy beeswax which i love and beeswax actually can be different than honey. So many people think beeswax and honey is the same. It's not. Beeswax tends to smell more of what the bees collect. So it can actually smell, um, you know, outdoorsy, florally, depending on the flowers that the bees actually can collect. Beeswax can kind of smell different. It can also have a little bit more of a animalic smell. And uh, because as Rich Mitch has pointed out in the past, bees stink. They do not smell good. If you're ever around a bee, a beehive, a bee farm, um, you'll 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 realize that they actually do stink. And so beeswax has a little bit more animalic vibe than honey to my nose. But uh, so this has this beeswax with benzoin, labdanum, moss and patchouli. But it's the patchouli in the dry down that instantly reminds me of a fragrance that's going to be even higher on the list. So this is like a niche version of one of my favorite celebrity fragrances of all time. One of Rich Mitch's favorite celebrity fragrances of all time, too. You guys know what it is? Uh, if you can guess what it is, let me know. But it actually, when we get to it, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, but this would be full bottle worthy for sure. I would love a full bottle of Moss Brex. I heard Robes, um, Mark, Robes 08, uh, I think Mark did a, best pickups of 2022 i think he got a bottle of this a lucky bastard but um before this juice is gone i will do a full review of moss brex um it's very good shame it's discontinued maybe if you said ramsey you could pick one although i've had a chance to smell it so maybe i want amber absolute more but i think this is maybe more my style than than amber absolute would be um 
Arbaz, yes, you have to go clean the erasers as a as a punishment. No, I'm just kidding. Thanks for joining, man. Yes, 2023 is going to be a great year, man. An hour, 20 minutes left of, tw of 22 for you there, Kid Kentucky. Um, well, we better get on this. We're only at number uh, 16. Let's see if we can finish it out before the new year for you. <laughs> Nice. That's good stuff, man. Hope you guys are popping the bubbly. Celebrating what a what a great year 2022 was. It was a it was a great year for me and it was also a challenging year. It was like that uh that book, it was the best of it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, you know? That's what 2022 felt like to me. Dude, vintage Amwash crystal and gold are going to cost you a pretty penny, DJ. I hope you set aside some serious funds. Um, but yes, Moss Brex. If anyone has experience with Moss Brex, let me know. But uh, I love the way they did the patchouli here. And when I told Rich Mitch what it reminded me of when I – actually, that was the last time I wore it. It's probably been years since I've worn it. Uh, he was He was shocked. Uh, I would love to do a proper comparison video one day. Maybe I will. Um, all right. So that was number 16. Number 15 is out and out classic 1970s patchouli. Even the name screams 1970s. The bottle, the atomizer, the name. Can you guys think what it is? Uh, it's actually a pretty well-known fragrance in the patchouli community. If you're a patchouli fan, you know this fragrance. Don't let the shitty bottle and name put you off either. This is great juice. I love wearing this. Uh, the smelliest of times, the unsmelliest of times. That's right. Uh, this is Jovan Sex Appeal, the greatest named fragrance of all time. Uh, Sex Appeal Cologne Spray for Men. Uh, now, uh, I don't know about versions. All I know is that the new version has like a silver cap i don't know if there's a difference i have no clue all i know is that this stuff is amazing it's a spicy patchouli uh probably the uh, um spicy patchouli and sandalwood those are the big three notes um and the spices definitely come out and it will remind you of a 1970s patchouli this is also slightly head shoppy not as head shoppy as that uh lush karma i was telling you about earlier but still very 1970s you know in the 70s apparently it was a big thing to put pure patchouli oil on yourself um and uh that was like a thing i don't know if it was it was. It started out with um, pure musk. I think it was like a, fa a fad to put like actual musk on musk oil on yourself or pure patchouli oil. And all the college kids thought wearing like pure patchouli was going to get them laid. And I think that's what uh, the why the 1970s are so associated with patchouli. And this came out, and you could buy this at drugstore, corner stores, you know, it's a cheapie. I got two bottles of this for like 30 bucks or 40 bucks or something. Uh, so I won't run out, but I love this juice, man. It is, um, it's very good, especially for a drugstore fragrance. You will be shocked. Uh, it's like, uh, it's like a, and it came out after my number one patchouli fragrance. So I'll go back and talk about it after we go through the list because I don't want to completely give it away. But if you're a patchouli lover, all right. And you are open minded. Give Jovan Sex Appeal a chance. OK, just pretend you haven't read the name. Um, if that puts you off, I actually I actually kind of like the name. It's so corny. Oh, and the best part is the box. I don't have the box right here with me, but I'll read it to you from uh, the, the blurb online. So this was the box. Sex Appeal, period. Now you don't have to be born with it. This provocative, stimulating blend of rare spices and herbs was created by man for the sole purpose of attracting women, period. At will, period. Man can never have enough. All right, how's that? How's that for piggish 
Uh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, and this stuff was like a hit. This put Jovan on the map. They also had like a Musk. Jovan Musk was also a big hit for them. And they really took some of the bigger houses by storm. Jovan uh, um, at will. That's right. You just wear a sex appeal. You walk up to any woman and say, at will, baby. No, but uh, I love the packaging. Just imagine putting that out today. Imagine the backlash of putting that out today. Uh, just puts a smile on my face every time. Flammable. That's right. Yes. At least it's not um, flammable, inflammable, and non-inflammable. Why are there three? Does anyone know why there were three flammables? inflammable and non-inflammable two would do it right um all right next on the list we've got number 14 and number 14 is a pierre cardin can you guess what it is it's the grandfather the granddaddy of amber fougere fragrances it is uh it came out um 14 years for Zeno. 14 years. Sorry, I had to do math. I don't like doing math on New Year's Eve. Um, this is Pierre Cardin Pour Monsieur in the bottle that I always thought looks like the building that Dallas is famous for. There's like a ball. You go up in there. There's a restaurant at the top, which I've eaten at. It's a Wolfgang Puck restaurant. It's exorbitantly expensive, but the ball rotates. So you get this like view of Dallas. Uh, you could also say that it looks like a microphone, or you could say it looks like something else. Use your imagination. But uh, Pour Monsieur is a spicy, leathery patchouli. I love Pour Monsieur by, uh, by Pierre Cardin. And you can see, I don't know if you can see right here, but 80%, 80 proof. Uh, and look at the little sticker that came on mine. I have no clue how to date these. But interestingly enough, the Eau de Toilette is I think still in production and the Eau de Cologne is discontinued. So maybe the Eau de Cologne is even older. I have no clue. But uh, all I know is I, I love this stuff. It is a proper old school amber fougere with lavender, geranium, vintage carnation, leather, sandalwood, uh, oak moss, amber, benzoin, tonka, and of course, patchouli. And, you know, you could make a direct link between the patchoulis that we love, you know, to this. And um, you know what? Uh, that's good stuff, man. Pierre Cardin, I used to get from my, your grandma or your grandpa? Um, but yeah, if your grandpa was wearing this, he was smelling fly, Corey. I'm a fan. Uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, Yes, it is. It is. I'm telling you, it's good. You're going to think it's going to suck just by looking at the bottle of Jovan. It's not. It's very good. Um, this is a great fragrance, but the problem that Pierre Cardin had is they kind of licensed themselves everywhere. So they, um, they allowed anyone to make their fragrances. There's versions of these that are made in New Jersey. There's versions of these that are made in France. There's versions of these that are made in Canada. There's versions of these that are just, it's impossible to almost keep up. So uh, I do know that the newer bottles have like um, PC on the top, I hear. And they also say, um, I think they only say Pierre Cardin right here. Like this is it. They don't say any of this stuff. It just says Pierre Cardin and that's it. But I honestly don't know. It's very hard for me to date these bottles. But if anyone knows the, the proper way to date these, do let me know. There is a UTIF on the bottom of my bottle, which someone told me it stands for um, pre-1990. Uh, I honestly don't know. But um, very good. I, I love this juice. Uh, and I got it for a steal. I think the guy gave it to me for like, seven bucks or something i think his uncle died or something he was just getting rid of stuff so uh i was very happy with that that's awesome antonio that's good stuff man 
Ah, Arrogance Porom. Yes, that's right. That is correct. I have a bottle, but I think it's a, it's a newer bottle. I don't think it's as old as the one that you sent me. Um, this is made by First, I believe. The First SPA. Yes, this is probably within the last 15 years or so, but it's still good. This could also be on the list, but uh, missed out on the top 2020. Missed out on the top 2022. 20, top 22 for 2022. Uh, grandpa, okay. I thought your grandma was maybe wearing four months. You are. I was like, damn. Uh, that's good stuff, Corey. Uh, Giorgio for men is coming up. Do not worry. Be patient, kid. Be patient. Um, yes. You know, and it's discontinued too. Someone told me it was discontinued. Yep. Great leather. Um, no, this is Aragon's for Aragon's for home. I do have Aragon's Womo too. I've got them both. Uh, this is the a Womo. This is the poor Um, I like them both. I don't love either of them, but I like them both. All right, what number were we on? Uh. Pierre Cardin, Poor Monsieur was number 14. Number 13 is a classic. Uh, very highly sought after niche. And I just grabbed my 30 mil, but I luckily have a 100 mil backup. This is the great Balenciaga Poor Homme. Now, Eugene did a first impression of this off of, of, of a sample I sent him. And he said that... Uh, he thought that Balenciaga Porom was very soapy to him. It, I know kind of what he means, uh, but number 13, Balenciaga Porom, to me, is like a one of the most unique fougeres. I think it's a take on a fougere. It's a spicy, woody fougere with this honeyed patchouli. And I really think that the honeyed patchouli makes Balenciaga Porom. Um, you know, there is some... Uh, Spicy herbal coriander in the top uh, with that lavender. and But it's the honeyed uh, patchouli that really makes it for me. There is some benzoin. There's some sandalwood. There's some vanilla in the dry down. Uh, but this is a Gerard Anthony masterpiece. These bottles are going for, for crazy money. Uh, came out in 1990. Very quickly discontinued. Uh, I think Anuj said it didn't even last five years. So by 95, they were discontinued. Uh, which is sad, really, because it's such an iconic fragrance. There was only run, one run of Balenciaga Pour Homme. Some people think that there's oud in this. Um, some people think that there's oud in this. I don't know. Uh, one thing that Thomas from the Early Greek Channel said once that really got me thinking, though, is he said, you ever realize how stable Balenciaga Pour Homme is? You ever notice how you grab one bottle, you grab another, and they all just kind of smell the same? And he said he thinks that maybe that's the oud. Uh, and I don't know. I'm, I'm torn because I don't get oud, but I do get how stable the fragrance is, how, you know, you almost never get a bad bottle of Balenciaga Pour Homme. Uh, and so it's a very interesting take. Uh, but uh, Balenciaga Pour Homme is, uh, again, easily could be a signature scent. I only have two bottles, but I'm very happy to have just a bottle and a backup. This is a 50 mil, I think. Uh, what are you? What are you? No, it's a 30 mil. So I have a 30 mil and a 100 mil. So, so very happy with those. Okay. Balenciaga Poron was number 13. Number 12, back to a true out and out patchouli. And this is patchouli antique. Now this is a vintage bottle. Uh, Patchouli Antique was basically repackaged and renamed Patchouli Presso by the house of uh, Les Nerides, and it was then promptly discontinued. You can't really see the back very well, but it is a short ingredient list. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but um, if you can find the bottles that look like this with the angels on the top, or sometimes the older bottles will actually have the angels kind of just pushed to the side. Grab them. 
Uh, I got this for like 40 bucks from Australia, uh, and it took forever to get here. But my God, what a good patchouli. So this actually was recommended to me by, I think, Jonathan. Um, Jonathan recommended this to me after I did my original patchouli video like a year ago. And um, what he was spot on. I mean, earthy, woody, chocolatey patchouli. There's some guarjum balsam in here. So it's a really resinous take on patchouli, but it's also a little bit green. So there's Scott's pine, there's cedar, sandalwood, patchouli, vanilla, and musk. And um, this is an amazing tape. If you just want a proper patchouli, patchouli, patchouli uh, done right, this is kind of like a, a cheap way to, to get your foot in, in the door of a true proper patchouli. And, you know, I've done a couple first impressions of this house. I have a uh, playlist out, this Lesney Rides playlist. I've done like the Apopanax and one other one. I was, I was really blown away by the quality quality of this house is very good uh it doesn't get much talk in the fragrance community but this less near rides is a very interesting house to explore um oh slightly smoky patchouli as well there's there's a little bit of this smoky vibe to it green smoky resinous chocolatey um that's very kind of you ringo thank you thank you very much my friend uh we are going to keep the energy flowing for sure uh, thank you. All of my wishes for you, you and yours as well. Thank you for the super chat. That was very kind of you. Um, I usually don't get super chats, so even like five bucks is nice. But when I see 50, that's like, uh, that stuff doesn't happen here on Channel Ram. So thank you, Ringo. Honestly, that means a lot. Uh, okay. Let's stay on, let's stay on, uh, on course here. Number 11 is a niche. It's a niche patchouli. And it's actually probably one of the most heavily uh, or one of the most the, the largest percentage of the composition that uses patchouli in maybe the entire list. I really don't know. But rumor is that this is 50 percent. It says the fragrance should contain an unusually high concentration of patchouli. 50 percent is what they say. And it's a Frederick Mall. Do you know what it is? It is by Bruno Jovanovic, and it is Monsieur. So Monsieur is one of my favorite patchoulis to wear when it's cold. This smells so good when it's cold. Uh, it smells absolutely amazing. Oh, I love Monsieur. It is bold and brash. And, you know, it was actually the first fragrance that came out that um, it was actually the first fragrance that came out that uh, came out after Estee Lauder bought Frederick Mall. So everyone was kind of worried because it was a different direction for the house. They were saying, oh shit, you know, is, is, it, is it gonna change what the house has done and that kind of thing. Um, but Monsieur uh, was done by a fragrance, by a uh, perfumer who's very heavy handed. Bruno Jovanovic is a very heavy handed perfumer. And actually it works perfect with patchoulis because that's how I like my patchoulis. I don't like, tentative you know squeaky uh you know soft shy patchoulis i like my patchouli to be just an absolute banger i like it to be uh powerful and that's exactly what this is and if you take a look most people don't catch this but it's not just monsieur it's monsieur period monsieur period the end all be all of monsieurs because there's many monsieurs right this is monsieur period and uh this is also um there's a, a couple other main notes that play with the patchouli one is tangerine and i think the tangerine is one of the saviors of this fragrance because it really feels like the fragrance even though it's very heavy-handed and lots of patchouli the tangerine gives it a little bit of balance and there's a rum absolute note which makes it feel very modern so even though you're wearing a note that is usually thought of in the 70s, you're wearing a fragrance uh, in, you know, that uses that modern liqueur note, because that's what all these houses do whenever they do a recreation of past offerings. Like Azaro Pour Homme Intense, they just add a liqueur note, you know, add it, make any modern take. Cartier did Pasha de Cartier Parfum, they add a liqueur note to it. 
Uh, and so the, the, the liquor note here makes it feel modern, but also vintage at the same time. And there's a beautiful suede and frankincense in the dry down. And I love leather. I love leather and suede. It's my favorite note, basically. Um, oh, hi, baby. You want to say hi on stream? Come here. Come here. You want to say Mer you want to say Happy New Year to the people on stream? Come here. Let me show you. <sighs> Look, you're on stream. Say Happy New Year. Say Happy New Year. <laughs> you look very cute, honey. Are you going bye bye with mommy? You're what? You want to smell something? What do you think of this? <laughs> oh, you got your stuff in your purse? Okay, I love you. Yo. Bye, love you. All right, you guys got to see my little one. Thank you, Ringo, again. That was very kind. I feel like I should keep it on there. Does it stay on there or something? I don't know how this works. I never get them. Um, <laughs> I don't think she liked Monsieur. I asked her what uh, I asked her what she thought, and she was like, "Eh." So yes, no, you're right. She's definitely. Uh, she is definitely the, uh, she's, she runs household ram here, uh, but back to fragrance. So Monsieur, where were we? It was number 11, we're on number 11. So yes, I would highly recommend checking out Monsieur if you're looking for a powerful patchouli, but also very modern. I don't know if they're gonna be able to keep this going, uh someone was was saying that there is a ingredient ban that might really affect monsieur that frederick mall may have to discontinue it uh or that the newer bottles that have the thicker labels may be different than the thinner ones i don't i don't know i don't know enough about frederick mall's new stuff to um you know to for sure say one way or another but uh, i'm a big fan of the bottle i got i got this from muda seer and this is uh how do i tell the batch code on here i don't think there's really anything written on oh yeah there is uh a20 what's that like april of 2020 201 a20 all right yeah monsieur is my pick at number 11. Uh, and number 10, somebody shouted this out earlier and they're spot on. This is one of my favorite patchoulis. I love wearing this cause it's a honey. It's like a honey patchouli. Uh, and it's just a classic and you can't value for money. If you ever find this at 20 bucks is through the roof. It is discontinued according to Parfumo. It is Giorgio for men. And, and this is from 1984. Uh, it's a aldehydic orangey pimento opening. You know, that pimento thing was very popular with um, Patu Porom and stuff like that. And uh, there's carnation, orris, patchouli, rose, sandalwood, cedar, cinnamon, amber, benzoin, oak moss, honey, musk, tonka, and vanilla. And so if you've smelled, um, if you smell, this is like the grandfather Poor Monsieur, Chanel's Poor Mon or um, Pierre Cardin's Poor Monsieur is like the grandfather of Giorgio for men, Giorgio Beverly Hills for men for me. Um, I love that spicy, earthy patchouli with cinnamon and honey. It's just, it's glorious. I could wear this every day. This could easily be a signature scent for me. Um, the woods, the spices, the oak moss. I, I do have a vintage bottle. So if you notice the juice color of mine is like golden brownish, yellowish brown. 
the new ones you'll find actually have this green juice color. Uh, I have never really compared the two. I hear people still say that the new version is good, but I've never actually personally done a comparison. So if anyone knows, leave it in the chat so people who watch this later on can can read that. <laughs> yes, that's right. The force is strong. All right, so that was number 10. Now we're in, so we're in the top 10. That was number 10. Number nine is a Chanel. And it's also one that's been shouted out multiple times. Can you guys guess which Chanel it is? It's probably only going to be one for a patchouli list. Uh, it is the great Coromandel. Uh, and this is the Eau de Parfum. I wish I had a vintage Eau de Toilette, but I'm happy with this. I can't complain. Uh, Coromandel is very famous for that patchouli and white chocolate. And actually, uh, I have a video up, an early impression video up, on a very expensive Zerjoff fragrance. Uh, that reminded me a lot of Coromandel, and it was, um, what was the Zerjoff that reminded me of Coromandel? Now I'm drawing a blank. Hang on. Hang on. Let me look. Let me see. Richwood. Richwood. It was Richwood. Uh, Richwood came out in 2010. Coromandel, the original, the Eau de Toilette, came out in, uh, 20, um, uh, in, tw in 2007, right? So Richwood came out a couple years after. I sampled Richwood. I really enjoyed it, but it, it gave me big Coromandel vibes, maybe just a little bit fruitier. Uh, they claimed the older bottles of Richwood had real Mysore sandalwood. Maybe if I found a vintage at a good price, I would go for it. Uh, but I am very happy with Coromandel. It's that, um, the thing about this that makes it so interesting is normally I like my patchouli's heavy and dirty, like with Monsieur, uh, or some of these vintage patchoulis we're talking about, Zeno, uh, Balenciaga Pour Homme, stuff like that, Giorgio for men. But this has that Chanel poshness. It has that uh, Chanel sparkle, if you will. You know, there is a little bit of citruses and neroli and freshness where you could wear this when it's not just, it's not just a cold weather fragrance for me. Uh, there's also some florals. There's jasmine, rose, and orris root, which makes it kind of powdery. So you get this powdery patchouli with vanilla and that chocolate, white chocolate they claim in the dry down, uh, and then the woods and the frankincense and the benzoin. It's just a beautiful creation. I would love to smell Borneo 1834 and see how they compare because they're both kind of Christopher Sheldrake creations um, with Jacques Polge. This one's Jacques Polge and, and Christopher Sheldrake. Um, but uh, man, what a patchouli they created. Whatever this accord was that was used, Coromandel is absolutely stunning. So uh, Coromandel comes in at number nine. Number eight. Uh, number eight. Let me catch up on the comments real quick. I was in hot perfumery at Harrods today, and I'm all perfumed out. Sampled the lauded Great Britain by Roja Dove. He's lowered the price from 1000 to 795 quid. Yes, he has. Uh, I thought it was even more than 1000 I thought it was like 1500 or something. But, uh, yeah, he like, I thought he cut it in half, which is insane. And, uh, you know, but what do you think of it, Magnum? I think it's one of my favorite you know, leather iris combination fragrances. It's a take on a Russian leather. It's very good. Yeah, Fetiche Pour Homme is very good. Do you have the EDP or the Parfum? Excellent cold weather. Yep. It's anytime. It's one of those anytime fragrances. Uh, I think I prefer, there's another Chanel, which I think I prefer a little bit more. Uh, just because it's more my style, and that's Le Leon. This also has a patchouli in it. Some people say it smells a little bit like Coromandel, but it doesn't. Uh, for me, I couldn't put this in a top patchouli list because it's not a patchouli fragrance. It's a labdanum fragrance that just happens to have a little bit of patchouli and, um, you know, vanilla. Uh, but it's labdanum is the star of the show here. Whenever I do my this is not a top 10 labdanum, uh, Le Leon will be right there in the running for the top spot. I'll tell you that right now. 
So, but it does have patchouli. I mean, that's another one of those where it does have patchouli. Yes, uh, Oligarch is discontinued, but either version. I have the EDP, but I hear the Parfum is, is also quite nice, but they discontinued it because of what's going on in Russia. I don't do a TARS, or at least I never found any that I love yet, but I would love to try Sultan Pasha's line one day. Um, it is not, uh, but it very well could. I think Dali Porom is one of the best Thierry Vasser creations of all time. Maybe it is his best fragrance of all time, but, uh, you know, that uh, that could easily make. There's so many fragrances with patchouli that could make the list, but I just don't think patchouli, when I first smell that, it's almost like a take on a, like a very interesting old school fougere with animalics, you know? It is awesome. And I tested that, uh, uh, what was it? Pierre de Valet number 47 the light the, on the last blind sniffing episode that we did and that smells so much like Great Britain it's insane it smells like they took Great Britain put it in a different bottle and they're charging whatever they're charging um Duncan smoking crack all right I'll tell you that right now don't listen to Duncan he finds some amazing fragrances but he also makes some outlandish statements uh fetiche is very good but i don't think it can compete with diagolev <laughs> um i'm telling you dude the best labdanum fragrance in existence is le leon in my opinion that smoky labdanum is out of this world in hand Made soap. I always see patchouli marketed as hippie scent. Of course, fragrance is different, but I always found it amusing. Yes, it is. It's always considered a hippie scent. The lion roars. It does. It's amazing. For sure. No doubt about it. And Taeus is one. Uh, did I rank my Chanel? I can't remember if I've ranked Chanel yet. Uh, I think I might have done a ranked Chanel video. You guys can go check out. Um, <laughs> never heard of that, Alan. A Abel and Abuses. Ensemble Shepra. What's that? I don't think I've tried that one, dude. Ensemble Shepra. Ah, Sultan Pasha. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of Sultan Pashas I need to try, man. It's just not my thing. Like, I wouldn't buy them. You know what I mean? I hate saying that, but I just wouldn't. I wouldn't spend my hard-earned money on it. If someone sent it to me, I would try it and talk about it, but it's just not my thing. <laughs> yes, because you watch me on, what, one and a half or two times speed normally? Um, that's hilarious. Bogways AG is also a great one, but good luck. They only made like 30 or 50 bottles of that, I heard, right? Um, all right, let's get back to the list. We we were on this little gem. Number eight is my favorite Guerlain masculine, my favorite Guerlain masculine, and it is Heritage. Eau de Toilette in the vintage gold cap. That's what you want, gold cap version. Um, Oh, I love Heritage, man. There is just something so, so special about this. And this is such a complex fragrance. It has something like 25 notes or something, if I remember. Um, uh, the masculine perfume bears the heritage of old values in revelation of the new age. It addresses, it is addressed on man with a sense of style, elegant as well as traditional presented a sharp, woody, and spicy fragrance. There is something when you first spray this that smells a little bit like a forest floor, almost like you tinctured like forest floor leaves or something with, um, I love the, there's something so beautiful in here, man. This, this mixture of the lavender with the violet and the geranium and the patchouli and the carnation and, the, and all of the stuff that goes together, the oak moss, the sandalwood dry down, the garlanade in the base. I mean, it's a masterpiece, man. And if and if you know um, garlanade fragrances of old, you'll smell them in here. 
So if you know Jicky, you'll smell Jicky. Uh, if you know uh, Abbey Rouge, you'll smell a little bit of the powderiness of Abbey Rouge in here. It's just the orris root, I think, gives it that powderiness. It's just such a... Um, it's just such a genius fragrance. Like, I just think about Jean-Paul Guerlain in the lab creating this, you know, just an homage to his family's house. Uh, this could be a signature scent for me. This is the best masculine Guerlain. The only one that gives it a run for its money is Abbey Rouge EDT, the Eau de Toilette. Uh, so, ah, you bought Le Leon. What do you think? Did you get it yet? Gold butt plug version. <laughs> it's just a gold cap, DJ. Just a gold cap, man. I promise. Uh, but I do love how Guerlain did the uh, little touches. You know, the Guerlain B right there. I love Guerlain. Uh, they're probably my favorite house. Um, okay. Next, we've got a controversial fragrance. A love it or hate it. This is a Javoy. And for patchouli, there's really only one I could highlight. Although, I will also say, Private Label has a banging patchouli in there. But I think it's more about the uh, vetiver and the uh, there is this um, uh, papyrus note that Celine Zerokian used to create the whole smoky, vetivery, patchouli, woody, you know, thing. Uh, that's just so masculine in private label. But the one you have to talk about for patchouli is psychedelic. And all of the Javoris come in this like snakeskin little box, very utilitarian. You can just throw it in your bag and go. Um, and they come like this. And the bottles are all high class, you know, crystal feeling bottles, expensive caps. Um, and you talk about chocolate patchouli. Uh, psychedelic is uh, patchouli with labdanum. So it's resinous and musky and vanilla uh, and geranium and rose with a little bit of citruses at the top. But I never get citruses. It just the patchouli just like swallows it all up. And it is very, as uh, the perfume guy has said, it's very chocolate patchouli. But uh, I love psychedelic. It's earthy. It's spicy. Um, it's just a great patchouli. I think it's a great patchouli. It was done by Jacques Flory of uh, Robertet. It smells expensive. It smells high class. It lasts forever. Um, you know, are there amber woods or modern materials in here? Probably. But I mean, this is a fragrance you can find for 175 bucks for 100 mils. I mean, we were just talking about Roja charging a thousand. So, um, so yes. Don't overlook the house of Javoy. They have some amazing stuff. Psychedelic comes in at number seven. Gardenia. I don't think I have 10 Gardenia perfumes, dude. Yes, Heritage, especially the vintage. Yes, absolutely. Yes, love Abbey Rouge. Ah, that bastard. KL Home is amazing, though. I bet I would love a lot of Sultan Pasha's work. I would love to have him on the channel with me, but um, I need to get to know his work more. Really, the the Sultan Pasha I want to get to know because I want to do a review on because it's been requested by two of my, uh, you know, of my uh, original subscribers is Sacred Scarab. I need to get to know that more. Noir de Noir is not on the list. I don't own a bottle, actually. I do own a bottle of... Um, Noir Anthracite, which this could be on the list. This has a beautiful patchouli note. It's actually even more turned up than the fragrance it's compared to, which is um, um, Narciso Rodriguez for him, Eau de Toilette. And, but that uses more musks. This uses more patchouli. But here's the thing. Uh, the Sichuan pepper and the leather really came out for me last time I wore this. Um, 
Man, it's such a great fragrance. This is, I mean, all you have to do is smell this once. Like if I would have smelled this in 2017, I would have known this is going to get discontinued. Like there's no way a fragrance like this stays in business. This is like a vintage fragrance. It smells like a vintage. Um, but there's a beautiful patchouli note in here. This could have made the list, but it just missed out to some of the others. Um, I'll talk about some more. What could have been once we finish the list, if you guys want to stick around. <laughs> yeah, agreed. I got to agree with that. You didn't like private label. Dude, private label is amazing. I love private label. Uh, but I love that papyrus, smoky, vetiver. Uh, Incidence Diplomatique also has uh, patchouli in it. But it's um, more about vetiver to me. It's really more about vetiver. I've turned into a little bit of a vetiver lover. Yeah, I agree. Javoy is dedicated to uh, high class perfumery and they don't charge an arm and a leg either. Um, here, I'll pull out my Javois while we're talking about them. So the two that have patchouli that I know for sure are Private Label, which um, Cecile Zerokian did Private Label. And it is, I think, and Thomas from Early Greek said this, and I agree with him. He said that this is just great daily wear fragrance. Like if you just want like a daily driver that smells absolutely amazing, private label is, is one to go for. And I agree. I think this is... Um, Uh, this is one of my favorite Cecile Zerokian creations, actually. I love Private Label, but I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Private Label. Um, let me see if I can pull up the notes. So Private Label is uh, papyrus, which is where you get that smoky, papery feel. Patchouli. Um, vetiver, leather, labdanum, birch, cedar, and sandalwood. So it is like that smoky, papery vibe. Um, so someone sent me a little mini of Santal blush. Right here. So I'll do a video on it one day. One of these little Tom Ford minis here. So I'll do a Santal blush video. But I've never... I don't think I've ever smelled the original Noir de Noir. I heard you want a vintage bottle, though, because I heard it's been reformulated. Um, I'm trying to see if my bottle's leaking. I don't think it is. It feels like maybe there was something there, but all right. We'll come back to you. We'll come back to you one day, private label, for a full review. And um, the other one was Incident Diplomatique. Which is right here. Incident Diplomatique. Have you guys smelled this one? <laughs> Incident Diplomatique is much more about the vetiver. It's such a great vetiver, though. Oh. It's got multiple types of vetiver. I think it has two different types of vetiver in there. Um, and Incident Diplomatique also has patchouli. Um, it was done in 2017 by uh, Vanina Marechiol. Mandarin orange, Haitian, and Java vetiver. I think Java vetiver is a little bit uh, smoky with nutmeg, patchouli, and sandalwood. Um, I love Private Label as well. Yes, that's right. Well, Graham and Duck are looking for vintage Noir de Noir. It's not easy to find those vintage Tom Fords. Not at all. They uh, they disappear very, very quickly. And people think they're sitting on a gold mine. And so they um, jack up the prices, you know. Let me put these back.
All right, so that was psychedelic at number seven. Number six, and then I'm going to have to dehydrate before we do the top five. Uh, this is going to be one of the greatest celebrity fragrance of all time. You should. Yes, do a side-by-side, -side, Alan. Let me know. Uh, this is Luciano Pavarotti at number six. Number six is Luciano Pavarotti for men. Uh, what a fragrance this is, man. Uh, this fragrance is so multifaceted. It's so good. Um, there's there's so much more going on than patchouli, but it's a patchouli, honey, leathery, spicy fragrance. Is probably how I would describe it. It opens up with this um, ivy and and citrus note. And there's Petit Grand, which Petit Grand is like the like the leaves and twigs and, you know, small branches of the citrus tree. It gives it this, um, I think it gives it this like, like this uh, different take on freshness rather than just doing the Neroli flower or something like that. Petit Grand, I think, is uh, maybe a little bit more oily and a little bit more masculine with uh, clove, iris, patchouli, cedar, honey, oak moss. A Papanax, which is sweet myrrh, uh, Liatris spicata, Russian leather, Tonka bean, and vanilla. And I got that Russian leather note big time when I wore this in the summer this year. Um, the Russian leather really came out in the heat, uh, but it's such a beautiful honeyed patchouli. And this Moss Brax, for me, smells like a niche version of Luciano Pavarotti. And when I told Rich Mitch that, he almost shit. Uh, but it, I think it's true. Uh, I think the two definitely share some DNA and, um, you know, that honeyed patchouli will do it. But if you can still find a bottle of that, if you do not own a bottle of Luciano Pavarotti, I would highly encourage you to buy the one that looks like this and you will not be, you will not be, um, let down. I will not deceive you. Oh. What a great, I can't believe this was a celebrity fragrance, man. It feels like you're smelling the fragrance of a man who lived life, you know, who who uh, enjoyed the excesses of life. Really? You found a vintage Italian cypress on Mercari. Is it legit, though? Mercari scares the shit out of me. Yep. Gold letter batch codes. That's what you want, according to Rich. I never knew that. So Rich Mitch taught me that. <laughs> Is that what you think? You think one and two are moods. How do you know? How do you know that, Thistle? I'm not saying you're wrong or right. I'm just saying, how do you know? What, what's, what are you basing this off of? Uh... Uh, I think I think that they're just hoping, you know. Um, I think Antonio was asking if you have a channel, Alan. Yeah, you should have a channel, Alan. Uh, that's the thing is, you know, people people the the pirates are asking that because people pay it. I mean, it is what it is, but people do pay it. Um, and they think they're sitting on a gold mine. The only way to fight it is for the fragrance community to come together and not pay it. Uh, but good luck with that. You know what I mean? So, all right, I'm going to dehydrate and then we're going to do the top five. Don't go anywhere. This is the second time I've leaving you guys once for an unboxing, once for a dehydration. Hold down the fort, Antonio.
All right, top five, dead or alive, as Robes would say. Let me catch up on the comments, and then we will do the top five. Yeah, I didn't buy it for the same reason. I think it's sitting there. don't think its reception was well received. Oh, that's BS, Alan. Your nose is absolutely sophisticated enough. You can just focus on ouds, man. You have like an ood channel. Yeah, you're right. It's the culture. It really is. We, you know, the the people who think that buying stuff will make them happy. Um, you know, and and you have to separate. I think your happiness from from you can't make your happiness built on buying. If you have to be, if you have to be happy. If you have to buy stuff to be happy, you're in a bad place, you know? Yeah, that's that's why I try to limit mine to, like, one backup. Uh, and even then, I really don't need backups, to be honest with you. It's like, if I run out of a fragrance, so what? I'll just wear something else, right? But there are some stuff that I just do not want to run out of that I will back up. But uh, most of my collection has no backups, except for the really the, the big ones I really love. <laughs> yes, get you the chopper. Uh, all right, so let's do number five. Number five is a niche patchouli, believe it or not. And can you guys guess what it is? It's a niche patchouli. It is from the house of Bois 1920. And it is Real Patchouli Eau de Toilette. Make sure you get the Eau de Toilette. Rich Mitch says that. The Eau de Parfum has been neutered because he actually bought one of these in an Eau de Toilette box and an Eau de Parfum bottle arrived. It was probably when they were doing that, their original switch over and they didn't want to have to print new boxes. So they just continued to use the older ones is my guess. Um, but Real Patchouli is such a great underrated patchouli. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a patchouli amber, if that makes sense. Uh, with woods, there's a eucalyptus note in here, believe it or not, but it's not as prominent as the eucalyptus note you smell in like Royal Mayfair. It's much more toned down. Indian sandalwood, frankincense, supposedly ambergris or an ambergris accord, if you will. Um, tobacco in the dry down. This was uh, Carlos from Brooklyn Fragrance Lover's favorite fragrance. If you remember Brooklyn Fragrance Lover, uh, I think he passed away a year and a half ago or so, something like that. But, uh, oh man, this is such a great patchouli and it's a shame, you know, this is one of those patchoulis that's so good. I would love a backup, but, uh, I don't need it. I mean, I'll just wear psychedelic or something else if I, if I want to get in the ballpark. But, um, Bois 1920 Real patchouli is just one of the best, uh, earthy, woody, chocolatey patchoulis with the frankincense and the tobacco and all of the stuff, you know, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's underrated is what it is. It's, it's the house that it's from and, but try to find the vintage Eau de Toilette would again be my, my strong recommendation. All right. So that was number five. Number four is a Thierry Mugler fragrance. Can you guess what it is? There's one Cherry Mugler fragrance worthy of being in the number four patchouli spot on my countdown, and that is the great Amen. Uh, this is a um, unused, unsprayed Thierry Mugler bottle, and this is actually a vintage. Before they changed it to Amen, it still says Angel Men. Uh, and so I'm set on juice. I've got a body wash with this too that I use sometimes. Um, but amen is just, you know, uh, I mentioned this earlier. It didn't make it high enough on the list, uh, because of this, you know, amen is the one that deserves to be at number four for me. Came out in 96. 
uh, created by the great Jacques Houclier. And um, L'Oreal butchered this. Don't get the new stuff. Um, coffee, caramel, patchouli, honey, lavender, peppermint, sandalwood, vanilla, styrax, tonka bean, amber, cedar, musk. Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, Bergamot, Coriander. I mean, it's just a plethora of notes. It creates this gourmand. It is sweet. There is that, um, you know, there is that sweet uh, overdose of um, ethyl maltol or whatever it is. I don't care. I don't care if it's sweet. I love it. I love Amen. I'll always love Amen. It's one of my favorite designers to wear in the cold. And uh, you could name any of the flankers because they're all based on that Amen Patchouli. You could name B-Men. You could name, um, you know, Pure Havan, Pure Malt, Pure Coffee, Pure Leather. They all have that DNA. Uh, I think I have a sample of Pure Wood as well from Rich Mitch and Pure Tonka. I would love to get a bottle of those two vintage bottles of Pure Wood and Pure Tonka. But, you know. I'm not paying someone 300 bucks for that. Screw that. It's not worth it. If I ever find one at a decent price, I would go for it. Um, you guys think Givenchy Gentleman Vintage is the number one spot, eh? Well, hold your nose. Hold your nose. Be patient. Be patient, young Skywalkers. Ah, Jonathan agrees. Bogway AG is great. I've never smelled it. Um, I hear it's pretty rare, though. Best from the house, especially if your bottle says Angel Man. Yes, it is. It's the best. Uh, but even the new one I hear that says just Thierry Mugler uh, is is still good. Just don't get the Mugler version that says only Mugler. Uh, don't get the L'Oreal version that says only Mugler is what I hear. Um, so, so yes, Amen is amazing. I love it. I never get bored of it. I love wearing the flankers. It always puts a smile on my face. It always puts me in a good mood. Every time I wear it, uh, I'm in a good mood, you know? And um, all right, so that was number four. What do you think number three is? If you guys know number two and number one, what do you think number three is? Where is Mike V? Ah, yes, there he is. Happy New Year, bro. Whip out your uh, whip out your composition folder and let's get some of your newest end of 2022 jokes you've been saving. There's no no reason to save them, man. 2023, you got to start all over. Whip out all the good jokes. They did. They just butchered it. L'Oreal, um, L'Oreal doing their best butcher impersonation. They really were, man. Patchouli Oud. I know you love Oud, Alan, so I'll put that on the to sniff list. Uh, hit me up. Send me an email. I would love. I, that would be perfect. That's actually exactly what I need because I don't need more than 20 or 30 mils, dude. That's that's perfect. Perfect for me. Uh, I'll take you up on that, Micah. <laughs> All right. I'll do it. This is not a top 10 praline. It's going to be Oud Cole and uh, Abby Rouge um, dress code, the flanker with the praline. Those are the only two pralines I can think of off the top of my head. And Oud Cole is shite, by the way. Can't believe. Uh, I cannot believe, you know, Garlam put that out as a $350 exclusive Oud. Makes my head hurt. Um, all right, number three is um, the classic, the great Guerlain, L'Enstant de Guerlain, O Extreme. So uh, I have the one with the black around the outside as well, and I don't really think there's a difference between them. I hear that the new one in the Listerine bottle is still good. I have not smelled the one in the Low Medial bottles, though, but some people say it's reformulated. If you're of that mind, get the one in the in the Listerine bottle that says L'Enstant de Guerlain, Porhomme, Eau de Parfum. And it's basically the same version as the O Extreme. Do not give some scalper $500 for this. Don't do it. It's not worth it. I'm telling you right now. Um, <laughs> 
Yes, I guess you're right. Yeah. What was I thinking? It's got to be number one on the list then. Um, oh, God. I love this, man. <sighs> and you have to remember at the time, this was competing with Dior Ohm, right? So it was like Dior Ohm or Lan Stante Irland O Extreme. Um, and you hate the cap. I love this, man. I mean, it is cheap, granted. I'll, I'll give you that. But the bottle is classic. You know what bottle looks like this now? Go look up Creed's newest release for women. It's like called, uh, it's called like Royal Wind or something. Um, let me look it up. Hang on. Creed. Wind Flower, I think it is. Yeah, Wind Flowers. Royal Wind. That does sound like something Creed would put out. Um, it, the bottle for Creed looks almost exactly like this, almost exactly like the same cap, but they rounded the edges. So imagine this rounded, um, and, uh, it's very strange to see it is being marketed by BlackRock when you pull up Creed, you know what I mean? Um, it looks like Creed copied the Lawn Stomp de Guerlain, the old bottles, um, like they just took this part right here and cut out the, uh, they cut out the edges, you know? Uh, but man, I love this so much. This is done by a perfumer named Beatrice Piquet. And she did one of my favorite Italian leather fragrances from the 80s called Trussardi Uomo. Trussardi Uomo and L'Instante Guerlain. Porom O Extreme are my two favorite Beatrice Piquet creations. Uh, this has Elemi and Star Anise. Oh, it's so beautiful. And what's so amazing about this is if you're a Guerlain fanboy like I am, if you smell the patchouli in Heritage, you will be able to make a connection between the patchouli and um, Lidge. They basically... You know, by this point, John Long was kind of related to, you know, figurehead duty, if you will. And um, so Beatrice BK came in and took that patchouli that he created for Heritage and made an entire fragrance around that patchouli blossom. Uh, neroli, jasmine, hibiscus seed, cacao, more patchouli, sandalwood. Oh, God, the sandalwood and the dry down stunning. And that tea note is so calming. This is such a relaxing fragrance for me. It's such a, um, it's, <laughs> there you go, Mike. There you go. You've been practicing, I see. Um, thanks for being here, Kate Kentucky. Uh, appreciate you being here, man. Yes, they will. They will absolutely bury Creed. You know, I think whoever, I think the people at BlackRock just got so caught up in the hype of Aventus, they didn't think beyond their nose, you know, but they own everything. So what do they care? I mean, whatever they spent a billion dollars on Creed for them is like a billion dollars is, what does BlackRock care about a billion dollars, you know? Uh, thanks for being here, kid. Appreciate it. Um, so that leaves two and one. So number two, can you guess what it is? One of the greatest patchoulis of all time. Discontinued, of course, because of course it is. Uh, this is Crizia Moods Uomo. Someone called it. They called Crizia Moods Uomo at number two. Spicy, woody. Uh, there is a little bit of lavender in here. It feels like a... Uh, it feels like a patchouli heavy fragrance built around like a uh, vintage masculine. There's so much more than just patchouli and Carizia Moods Uomo though. Uh, there's old school carnation, there's leather, there's oak moss. There's all of the things that I'm saying that I love in my vintage fragrance from today. Uh, Giorgio from NVIP Special Reserve. Uh, there's all of that stuff. It's all here. But the patchouli note is just so amped up in front and center. It's like, you want patchouli? Bam, patchouli, baby. And you could find these for under 100 bucks. I don't know if you still can, but uh, this is a stunning, spicy, woody patchouli. There's a little bit of rift. There's a rift in the forest. There's, there's a, 
um, disturbance in the force right now because some of our uh, vintage and YouTube love, you know, partners love this fragrance. I know Duncan and I love it. Some of them don't like it. I think uh, I used to think Rich Mitch liked it. I don't think he likes it anymore. And I don't think Eugene liked it when Duncan sent him or he ended up buying a bottle because he heard Duncan say it's the greatest patchouli of all time. And he bought it and, I, and on stream, Eugene said he didn't like it. So we're kind of divided. I'm in the I love it camp. Uh, I would love, I, you know, I even hear that the moods for women is great. But man, for me, this is patchouli. There's no way I would ever sell this. Spicy, woody masculine in the style that I love with the patchouli amped up. I mean, what more could you ask for as a patchouli lover? Um, and I think I got this for 70 bucks or something. I mean, no, no, no brainer for me. Uh, Carizia Moods Womo from 1989. And it feels like an 80s fragrance. Everything is, everything is big on that fragrance. Um, Interesting. I'll check it out. That's good stuff. Thanks, Micah. Uh, well, I have that number one Givenchy Gentleman from 1974 EDT spray. I bought it the same day with Vintage Bellamy. Hey, that's a hell of a buy, man. It's on eBay for $54.99. What is? Critia Moods Womo is for $54. Bucks. If that's true and you're looking for a patchouli fragrance, Pull the trigger. Just blind buy it. Trust me. Trust him. The Ram says go for it. I don't own that one. I I buy Brian. Unfortunately, I uh, am still waiting to find my vintage bottle. It's out there somewhere. I'm still waiting to find it. Uh, I have purchased some Rogue fragrances off of Etsy before. Yeah, worked pretty well. <laughs> it is actually called Wind Flowers. Yes, um, I they should have just went with Royal Wind. I'm telling. Why? Why did they avoid that? Why? Why did they avoid Royal Wind? You know, it's right there in their face. Royal Oud. Royal. Um, shit. What was the other Royal? Um, now I gotta look it up. And Royal Oud. Uh, Royal Scottish Lavender. Royal Service. Royal Water. Royal Mayfair. Royal English Leather. Royal Delight. Royal Salen, Salan. Why did they avoid Royal Wind? It's right there in front of their faces. Um, but they did. Uh, they went with Royal Flower. Uh, Wind Flower which is probably the worst name of all time, but they did. They went with it. Uh, and if you really want to get a laugh, go read the Parfumo blurb on Creed. Creed is a perfume brand from England. The company was founded in 1760 by James Henry Creed in London and has been family owned for over 250 years. The house was supplied already in the early years after the foundation of the courts of European royal houses and important personalities from culture and politics. Creed's clientele included em Emperor Napoleon III and his wife Eugenie. Oh, his wife too, of course. Uh, Queen Victoria, right? Yes, who else? Uh, Emperor Franz Joseph. Well, sure, yeah, of course. Uh, what about Franz Ferdinand? Did they start World War I, too? The company has been based in Paris since 1854. Olivier Henry Creed leads the house today in the sixth generation. Creed offers an extremely exclusive perfume production on request. The creations are then guaranteed five years fabricated only for the client. Ooh. In 1912, the fragrance Aralfa was an exclusive welcome for passengers of the Titanic. Is that fucking, is that actually legit? They're, they're claiming that Aralfa was exclusive for passengers of the fucking Titanic. I want to see Aralfa bottles on the goddamn bottom of the ocean floor when they're looking in the, in the Titanic wreckage. The Creed Company regularly uses well-known personalities, preferably aristocratic ones, and historical stories for its advertising. Stories. 
often the evidence of this is missing. That that right there at the very end is all they get. Often the evidence is missing. Um, anyways, that always cracks me up reading that. Uh, uh, 99 positive feedback. Royal flush. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Welcome. Welcome, Giorgio. Down the gripper. This crate still makes shirts. Uh, I know that Pierre Bourdon has a couple suits that it was given to him. Royal wind for those moments when the king and his oak need a little gas X after <laughs> Oh, that's great. You know, they did it to themselves. They really did. Can't blame them. Yes, that's right. Uh, um, Santa Maria Novella absolutely wipes the floor with them, doesn't it? But from the 1100s. Um, dude, Pota España is legit. I'm telling you. That stuff blew my fucking mind. Um, I never thought I would be able to meet a new leather that I didn't know before that would just jump to the front of the line almost and Pota España just elbowed everyone else out of the way almost. Uh, of course, my favorites are still a little bit ahead of it, but god damn, it's good. <laughs> oh, that's right, Mike. Yes. Just imagine at the end of Titanic, whenever they were floating in the sea and Leonardo DiCaprio was just about to die from freezing cold ocean water. Uh, it was actually the Creed bottle he was holding on to that ended up killing him. So close. Is Aiden Bob like that, too? I thought they were legit, though. Wasn't that true? Or... They said they met JFK, found their fragrance right, and brought it back and asked them for more or something like that. Parfumo says 1901 uh, is when Pota came out. Unbelievable. That's true. Uh, all right, number one, you guys know there's no need trying to hide it. My favorite patchouli fragrance is Givenchy Gentleman from 1974 with the... Silver label. Um, this is the 60 mil splash. I also have a spray, but I actually prefer the splash. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't know they were that cheap. I thought they were always expensive. But um, but yes, so Givenchy Gentleman is my number one patchouli. It's the only number one that's fair. You know, I, I love wearing this stuff. It's spicy. It's leathery. It has everything that I love in a patchouli. It's got the honey. God, that honey, that animalic honey patchouli is just... Oh. I think there is some um, relation, let's say, between, you know, something like Giorgio for men. I think there's some relation between uh, Pavarotti. I think there's some relation between Moss Brex. I think there's even a slight relation to Joe Bond's sex appeal. This came out two years after this. So this was obviously on Joe Bond's mind when they made sex appeal. Uh, and of course, in 1972. Um, 1972. So this came out first. Beer Cardin Pour Monsieur came out ahead of um, Givenchy Gentleman, but there's just something about this. I mean, there's just something about Givenchy Gentleman. When I wear it, it puts it to the next level. That honey patchouli with the uh, orris that makes it slightly powdery and that leathery, castorium-like, oak mossy, animalic patchouli dry down is just out of this world, man. Oh, could easily be a signature scent for me. Um, easily, easily this could be a signature scent. So, Givenchy, gentlemen, you guys called it right. Number two and number one. Kiritsia Mutomo and Givenchy, gentlemen. Those are my favorites. Uh, yes, Shakespeare War Creed, of course. 
That's interesting. I knew they kept putting their prices up, but I didn't realize they went up that much. I had no clue. Um, so what do you guys think of my top 22, 2022 live stream patchouli fragrance list? I hope you guys appreciated it. I'll put the list in the comments or in the uh, description of the live stream. Tell me, do you like doing these in a live stream format or do you prefer them? where it's just a video because this took basically three hours what would have took me an hour on a video although we did a lot of the other things we talked about some of the fragrances that missed the list we talked about we did an unboxing that was not scheduled it just showed up halfway through um you guys want to talk about some more patchouli fragrances that missed the list or are you guys ready to uh go imbibe alcohol internally uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. I have no clue. I have no clue. It says 90% volume, Parfum Gentleman, SA92300, Levelos, Paris, France. I have no clue how old this is, dude. I just know it is one of my favorite fragrances to wear. I love this stuff. And from the splash, specifically. Um, ugh, dude, that hurts, man. Seriously, that really hurts. You know how many vintages you could get for that? Uh, that and they're probably better. I mean, hell, my scent of the day, Anuj found me this for 60 bucks or something, and this is amazing stuff. Amazing. Um, oh. I love it. Very good. Very, very good. So it's just, it's so hard to spend that kind of money, you know? It was on the list. You must not have been here, Tyler. It was on the list. It was number, uh, what number was uh, Psychedelic? Number seven. It was number seven on the top 2020, on the top 22 patchoulis for 2022 countdown. You too, brother. Thanks for watching, man. Yeah, tell me what you guys think. If you prefer the live stream or if you prefer the uh, videos. Um, oh, man, I love I love uh, this Giorgio for Men VIP Special Reserve. Um, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, now you can go back and watch it because we're about to wrap up probably. Three hours about my limit. My throat is like ready to go. Uh, it's ready to give out. And, um, and yes, I need to, I need to start imbibing some champagne. It's new year's. So, uh, you guys like the live stream, huh? Okay. I'll make a note of it. I will make a note of it. That's good. Good to hear. I like the interaction, so it does work well. Um, well, I appreciate you guys watching. I want to wish you all a very happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Bodacia the overpriced. Um they are, but people pay it. That's the thing. If somebody walked in and just dropped 900 bucks, all they gotta do is sell one bottle. One. And they're there. They're home free. You know what I mean? Um imagine how many bottles they'd have to sell at 50 bucks to make up for that. So yeah, man, it's it's a very interesting. Brocadacious. That's a good one, too. I'm partial to Bodacia the Overpriced, but uh, Brocadacious is very good as well. Thanks, Antonio. Hope you guys uh, have a fantastic new year. Have a safe, prosperous one. Um, happy New Year. Everyone be well, healthy. Happy, prosperous, be safe tonight. If you're going to go out and drive, avoid the drunks or don't be one of the drunks. And uh, it is. I'll have to sniff it one day. I don't know. I've never smelled it. I'm not a Bodacia, the victorious uh, fan, but I did like that intricate or whatever the hell it was. Yes. Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for being here, guys. All right. Take care. Cheers. I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.